Welcome to a special summer episode of the Andy Takes That Chance podcast. I'm Matt, and today I welcome Cowshed Loyal founder Dan Pozzer Porritt and ragtag sing along Ollie Fisher in regaling the story of the Cowshed Loyal. Good evening, chaps. Good evening, mate. Cheers for that intro, mate. <laughs> no worries. I was, I was trying to work something nice for you, so that was the, probably the kindest thing I could think of, Ollie. That's nice. Well, you're on Swan, so that's a good start. Right, so. We're here to just talk about the, the Cowshed Loyal and tell the story from from its beginnings, uh, from the, the very, very start. And 2007, 2008, Pozza was probably the very, very start. And as I'm somebody who likes to do his research on, on these, these matters, I've gone on to a forum that we all used to frequent called Down at the Mac. And I found a, a post from a, a young poster called Pozza on the 5th of May 2008 would you like to know what it said I'm going to regret this but yeah go on then a good mate of mine supports York City and they have a fan group called the Jorvik Reds they go to great lengths to get the atmosphere going at York Games organise flag days have loads of banners arrange special events for away games etc etc I've been with him to a few games and it's been a good laugh and looks good so nothing embarrassing really there. All all these laughing away. <laughs> but it's just not, York. What's happened to York, man? There's nothing too bad. Um, but what's quite interesting to see is that it wasn't Dortmund, Galatasaray, Red Star Belgrade, Rangers, P O A K P O O K P A O K. I can't even say the name. <laughs> or Napoli. That was the inspiration behind the early stuff. But York City. Yeah, strange one really when you think about all the uh, sort of well-established groups that they have out throughout Europe that York City should be uh, the inspiration really. Uh, but no, basically what, what you said in the post, um, I've, I've been up to York uh, a few times and uh, Jorvik Reds were their group, um, obviously playing down in lower leagues, probably a little bit more freedom than what we might have had at the time. But um, yeah, they, they had a group and they used to sort of put on the displays, they had the flags, the banners, um, a little bit more sort of organised um, sort of singing and atmosphere um, and it were at a time at a time where atmosphere were you know really low there were, there were basically nothing we had this, the small singing section the Galfam um, Grown was famous wasn't it it was yeah I mean on field events around about that time probably didn't help matters um, but yeah the atmosphere were, were dull really you seem to have little pockets of people um, around the ground like I said they had a little singing section in the top left hand corner we used to sit up there and there were probably no more than you know maybe 50 to 100 sometimes oh yeah you might for your bigger games when you had a decent away following it used to obviously improve which things naturally did so um, but on the whole it were a pretty dull experience really so it was just a case of just putting feels out there back then and you know in a young naive state and trying to get trying to just see if there anybody else fancied getting involved and you did get some early traction so there was a few people that offered to get involved one of them being myself I was also a little frustrated with the atmosphere at the time the away from home Huddersfield fans were great weren't they so yeah, they'd go yeah. away and make Always. a racket uh, take over one or two pubs and be singing before or after and it was great atmosphere that they used to create and we always used to think why can't we do this at home what, what stops us from being able to do this at home and we were later to find out exactly what stopped us from doing this at home and I'm going to have a little bit more more fun in a moment but I've got another post of yours from down the back here as well <laughs> really have it's, it's like, all, it's like a trial this yeah, isn't it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just record this please Ollie <laughs> yeah. and um, October 13th 2008 so this so you can see that how long ago it is since we've started this uh, thing and another post and things started to get a bit more serious about this time so 2008-9 was the time when things started to get a bit more serious and you've got more more traction if you like more people wanting to get involved more people willing to get involved and your post just mentions that we all know that the atmosphere isn't the best down at the golf like you just said everyone seems to have different views about how to get something going uh, new songs etc how would folk feel about a supporters group being set up to try and encourage a better atmosphere at games uh, and again you've mentioned York City uh, and what they do so you're drawing on that experience then and, and at that time uh, you mentioned Crystal Palace uh, Akron and Stanley interestingly Celtic Newcastle and a few others Aberdeen have set up just around about that time set up a similar group as well having similar concerns um, and the response that you got at that time was, was reasonable uh, the mm. club at the time as well was starting to allow 
the odd South Stand game behind the goal. I think we'll remember the, the first time, uh, according to history on here, the first time that we got together as a group was uh, Yeovil at home right. under the lights. Right. And there was a, a rather young Asmir Begovic, I remember, had playing out of his skin <laughs> that day and got man of the match for, for Yeovil. And Liam Dickinson was was taking free kicks, wasn't he, at that point from 20. It was all he could do at that point. But <laughs> <laughs> Probably got injured as he were doing it. But yeah. But so a few people got on board, uh, which was great. Um, the early days, I suppose, was just a case of trying to arrange meetups, and we'll talk about it later on. But what's what what helps is success on the field, and you know, a momentum that that sort of starts, if you like. And the Yeovil game, I think, was a nil nil draw, and we also, or you you organised as well a. A, get, a gathering if you like at Peterborough away standing behind the goal grouped together I remember someone brought a drum um, mm. I don't think it was your mate Ollie I think it was someone else bought, brought a drum My to mate. you've got a drummer mate haven't you in the south stand but there's um, twins yeah and um, <laughs> that's alright that's the one yeah. and uh, yeah so there's there's a few you know so a few little things but the game itself is the game which is infamous for Cosy being in the Peterborough end and getting kicked out not for being a Huddersfield fan in the Peterborough end but for abusing Stan Turner in the dugout because of the right, performance right. on the field. I didn't know that. Yeah, so he's, um, we lost 4-0. Chris Lachetti got sent off towards the end. Matt Glenn didn't have the best of games. And Good day out then. It, yeah, so you can, you can see <laughs> we can see why things didn't take off early because you kind of get together <clears> and people go, oh, I can't be bothered with that again. And, and how difficult was it in the early days to just kind of get people, get, get that traction, you know, in that season and, and try and get people together and, and obviously people have got different ideas as well how difficult was it to just merge things i think i think it was sort of a twofold difficulty as you've sort of gone on there with regards to what actually happened on the pitch um historically um and even now you know 90 well probably 95 to 98 percent of all atmosphere um is usually generated when your team's playing well um you know english fans tend to react in the stands to what's going on on the pitch Chris Lurg has uh, just said that hasn't he in yeah. the interview yeah. there's very much a, a thought of I'm a supporter uh, these guys are sort of playing if they play well I'll I'll sing and enjoy it and if they're not I'll go the way and sort of get at them and you know I've paid yeah. the money I've, I'll voice my opinion and that's prevalent throughout England as well isn't it yeah pretty much so yeah um, like you mentioned there were a few groups around at that time Palace uh, Accrington um, Aberdeen Celtic Rangers had a you know a small group up there Blue Order um, isn't it? Blue Order yeah, Good name, Rangers, I, like yeah. Um, I think probably more Rangers Celtic brought on from experiences in Europe probably playing out there and seeing what you know seeing what fans were like over there um, how York and Accrington got up and running no idea really to be honest but again lower down leagues probably a little bit more freedom maybe one or two people there going on European trips and stuff like that again seeing what fans are so like you can see what it's going on and that's where um, you can see people with their megaphones uh, you know giving it some kite at the front and they don't tend to watch the game do they they tend to watch the fans more and they just whip things up and uh, obviously you place yourself down at the front but you're not quite at that sort of level yet are you uh, by yeah uh, uh, no, not not at the moment. Uh, we've, we've, we've still, still watched we the made, game. Uh, we have made an impact. Yeah, it's probably 50 50 uh, at the moment. Um, but yeah, speaking about European fans, like you say, there, there is a lot of um, a block up front with a megaphone, sort of almost conducting the crowd. Um, again, not a natural thing for, for English fans. Um, you usually have a full stand and maybe three or four you know, groups of people, and sort of people talk about a natural. Um, sort of progression of a song it starts off and you know eventually Catches everybody on, yeah. joins in um, whereas with us it is a little bit more choreographed but my argument to that be someone has to start the song at some point so in you know fashion everything is sort of choreographed what you, what you find um, though when it's not choreographed is that someone will start a song in one corner and then they'll hear it at the other side and they'll start 10 seconds mm. after so you get a song we do which get is, that quite a lot as yeah, well where you're sort of delaying your your bit of the chant because you've heard yeah. it coming from the back sort of a couple it's, of seconds it's almost like, like Poswell know this and anyone who's got kids know this when you do row 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 your boat you, you know you start doing the second verse yeah. and someone sings the first verse at the same time and it's almost like that going over and over isn't it mental ultras you two yeah. absolutely <laughs> mental yeah so I can't wait till row 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 your boat kick starts next well, season I'll make a note of that one and uh, we'll see how we can go with so it. The, the fun 
post that I found on Doubt the Mac from 2008 came to when naming your new group. So you, most of these are your ideas. One of them is my idea. I'll let you figure out which one it is. And I think it Probably, was. Yeah. I've, I've, I've got the PM somewhere on my old account. <laughs> can I guess? Because I don't know this one. <laughs> you can do. I think one of them might have been my idea based on what Poser had said uh, about the history of area, but I can't remember exactly Blood if it ice. was or not. But let's. So we'll go through the names of these groups, Poz. Uh, blue Army. Simple, one. effective. Simple, effective. Yeah, we're yeah. playing blue. Bit blue order, but yeah. Terrier Army. Yeah, probably not the best. Blog name. <laughs> blue Army Ultras. Yeah, again, probably not the yet. And it gets a bit more fun at this point. The Blue Blooded Army. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that can't be my <laughs> suggestion. That must have come from somebody else. I don't think I would have thought of that. This this sounds like a bar in the town centre. The Huddersfield Revolutionists. Yeah, Revs. Probably a bit a bit extreme that one maybe. As Ollie said. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. The Hoodites, based on. Uh, I the think Luddites. that was a play on the words with the Luddites from the. Uh, I like that Castle one. Hill and, that was the yeah, one I couldn't it's remember. It's a nod to. to I think it was a joint effort, effort, but it was kind of like a. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course, the Cowshed Loyal, which took 67.83% of the vote. Blue Army came second with just under 20%. So in 2008, in um, in October 2008, that's when the name was born and it felt like you had a group at that point. You felt like, you know, you give something a name and all of a sudden you've got something, haven't you? You've got progress, you've got momentum and then the next thing that you do is you speak to the club mm. and you see, right, we've got this idea. We want to do this. What were your thoughts on this process? And you organised a meeting with uh, this is this is 11 years ago so it shows how, how long Sean Jarvis has worked yeah. at the club so there was a meeting with Sean Jarvis back in Oct at the end of October 2008 to underline what we wanted or what we thought would be a good idea it was more of a we would like to do this would this be okay kind of meeting wasn't it yeah I think with the, um, the sort of safety officer at the time well still there now actually at the club um, it were sort of very stringent on what you could and couldn't get away with so rather than sort of turning up on mass with various bits and bobs uh, I, I remember speaking to you about it and we, we went down and spoke to Sean uh, I remember the meeting quite well um, good meeting, it was good Sean yeah, was he were, he were very engaging positive. always were, always yeah, typical he were, Sean yeah you were engaging with it and you know we, we pitched his ideas to him and he, he seemed to be you know sort of fully on board with it we we spoke about um obviously wanting to be behind a goal you know traditionally yeah. you, 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 you noise comes from behind a goal generally at that time um, we obviously knew we couldn't have the south stand because john robinson is it john robinson, isn't it, the john robinson yeah, yeah. he was he was obviously never going to let that happen at that moment in time so we suggested to move to the empty stand because at that point it was the centenary season, wasn't it? We had uh, fifteen and a half thousand season tickets. Yeah, with the hundred pound season. Wasn't it? Yeah, so everywhere was full apart from that one stand. It was, it was a scattering of it, but see, but prices were going back to normal next season, mm. the season after. So we thought, FML, it's going to be empty like it always is. Why don't we go down there and and, and fill a a corner if you like? And we pitched that to him, didn't we? And then yeah, there was a bombshell about two months later, which. I think a lot of us had already actually bought season tickets in there before yeah. the, the bombshell hit, yeah. if I remember rightly. And the bombshell was? Well, they decided to turn it into a family stand, which, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think, again, at, at that time, we just feel time were a totally different club to how it, to how it is now. Um, there were no real uh, engagement on, shall we do that, shall we not? Is it a good idea, is it not? You know, looking back, you might think, yeah, it was a good idea, it was a quiet area at ground. Uh, on the flip side of that, because it were quiet, we saw it as perfect for trying to get some building yeah, and get some going in there. It were, it were a blank canvas, and after this discussion with Sean, um, I know I came away and probably you as well, thinking, "Yeah, he's on board. We've got gonna we've be got great. a section. We've got some what we can work with." And then all of a sudden, it the, almost felt like the rug were pulled, yeah. pulled from under us, um, which were disappointing really, because a lot of work, had, as as we've mentioned, sort of gone on behind the scenes to pitch the idea to the fans, get people on board, you know, a lot of sort of media interest, shall we say. Um, I'm pretty sure the decision, from what I understand, the decision to turn it into a family stand was uh, was a decision from Nigel Clemens, I think. Um, yeah. Oh, actually, no, Clemens wasn't no, there at the time. I've been really unfair. That Ken Davey, Andrew Watson, Dean Hoyle and Sean were the board, I think, at that point, weren't mm. they? Um, I don't, that was I don't kind of at the time when Dean was just about to take over as well mm. wasn't it from Ken so I think there was um, pr 
probably Sean might have we don't really know do we? he could have floated the idea and then been, been said nah there's we're going to turn it into a family stand we'll get more people in that way Which, yeah I was going to say I think at that point from memory I can't remember a family a designated family section at the yeah. club I think towards maybe the police box end of the riverside used to be but yeah, so they, I don't they think they're actually a designated family area and at that time I think it were when we we'd not so long ago one family club of the year or right? around about that time and yeah. yeah you know 50 lads wanting to yeah. maybe cause a bit of Bit of a ruckus bit of compared ruckus to, fill, compared to filling it with maybe eight hundred families. families. You know, for a club, there's eight hundred people. You can see why they. You can see why they went you with can. the cost option. And, and to be honest, if we were on the board, we would probably have done the same. So we, there's no yeah. ill will, uh, hard feelings yeah. whatsoever. But we persevered, nonetheless. We did. We we give it a good go, best we could, and we had some relative success. I'd say, looking back, um, yeah, all right, nowhere near as big as what we are now, or as you know as successful as we are now but again at the time there were different stuff going on and I think we must have maybe between 50 to 100 people in that sort of little block on could the have been more basis, actually I think sometimes was, more yeah uh, the, and obviously 2009-10 was a fun season things were going well on the mm. pitch that's when Lee Clark's side that you know beating Brighton 7-1 was a great game and right in front yeah, of us was when that, we yeah. came back to yeah. beat Walsall 4-3 in injury time when we were 3-2 down there was a lot going on Southampton game where Jordan Rhodes penalty gets saved and then he puts it in right in front of us yeah there was a lot of good yeah yeah, there's a lot of good times during that season and things started to um, evolve but as they evolved we had a few issues didn't we and we we were obviously there for the fun we're just singing songs there was no no swearing or anything really bad because we we understood we're in a family stand so we said okay we'll we'll behave to to the point where we're not going to sing f this f you know no one wants to hear that whatever stand you're in really and we some of the things that I remember having problems with and all is shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shaking my head. He just does not <laughs> so there's some of the things that we ran into. So with with setting up a group like that, TIFO is um I think you want to do flags, banners, etc. We weren't allowed to do that. We you, you brought in one I think someone brought in a flag once and you know, as soon as they walked in and set it up it was do you have a fire safety yeah, certificate yeah. for that? Yeah, really. From the stewards. And of course you don't, you're not going to roll it out of your back pocket <laughs> I and say there you go and scroll you know yeah. you're not going to present that and so obviously that was taken down and one one thing which I thought was really harsh but I might have laughed a little bit at the same time because it's my cruel personality but you spent I think two or three nights putting together little flags and what have you so to hand out to kids you know yeah. the family stand so we could work with other people in the family stand so you had a load of little flags that you wanted to hand around so they could wave them behind the stand and and they were they were harshly taken away, Pos. They were. Um, I think, like you say, were again probably more the safety regime than the than the club. At yeah, that absolutely. Point. Um, I think once we found out we were um, going to be a family stand as well, we had to tailor our approach. I do remember chatting to you about it, sort of saying, "Look, we know we're going to attract attention regardless. Being a family stand, it's going to be even more. Let's sort of curb." You know the sort of yeah. the songs with the swearing, etc. So um, we went to the corner, didn't we? To yeah, try we and moved move towards away what, a little bit. Yeah, moved towards the left, towards the kilner as well, because mm. historically the kilner were more the noise, um, sort of the noisy stand. Yeah, and the families were uh, at the other. They were yeah. tended to be towards the other side, so we sort of positioned ourselves to the left of the goal. Um, but yeah, like I say, it got to a point where you couldn't even stand, you'd stand up. Yeah, you stand up point, and one of them would uh, waving you down, and yeah, that, that, that you could just be standing up, up going to the toilet or something, and and. The, <laughs> We tried to. I remember the time we tried to um, throw toilet. You know, you, you yeah, the brought streamers. those toilet streamers yeah, in, and yeah. and uh, someone whose name will be anonymous on the podcast through uh, brought some till roll, I think from work maybe, and um, threw it up in the air, and it doesn't quite go the same as streamers or toilet paper does, it? <laughs> and it bounced on the concrete and then went over the advertising hoarding, and he went to at half time went to get a drink or to the toilet, and one of the stewards followed him and kicked him out for it, and rules are rules you know if you throw stuff on the pitch you do get kicked out and uh, I remember John Robinson saying to him that he would be banned for three years unless he moved his season ticket to mm. the Kilner so you could see that they weren't having it I think they probably went down the line of troublemakers troublemakers let's stop it before it gets even started we'll be overzealous and hopefully these people will go away and that was that, that was very much how I felt personally mm-hmm. um, you know a lot of not just myself uh, a lot of like I said, we used to get 50, 200. There were a lot of people in there that and wanted it to happen. Yeah, and yeah sometimes you, you turn up and <laughs> there were a, a, a stood there, three or four 
on the aisles and, and two or three in front and you know it were it were ridiculous really. Yeah. Um again you kinda of got that feeling that look if we cause these guys as much hassle as we can they'll get bored and, and go away. Um which I always thought everybody was overly polite to them just so they would see that, you know, we're not a bad group of people. We're just trying to We probably like you say we probably went the other way. Um and then and sort of curb what ideally we would like to do. Um, just to try and stay there for as long as possible, really, without being turfed out, which I'm sure you'll come on to with your well, history that, line. We eventually kind of did. did. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of that season, it was made clear that they didn't really want us there. I don't think the club ever said anything to us directly, did they? I don't think they could have actually stopped it, but it, it was getting it was, to the point where you could read between Whether the lines it was the club or not, it was the safety team did yeah. not want us there. And we were obviously... It Vag- it became, nomads uh, at this point and um, there were three problems really I, I found with the Cowshed Loyal at that point in that the club weren't that interested at the time uh, I think if we'd have maybe organised another meeting that's maybe mm. from our point of view we should have organised more meetings with them I think so yeah um, and yeah. it's probably just you know a couple of lads and a few others in you know in their sort of early to mm. mid 20s and late teens you know just not really understanding what it needs to to make a group and I think because we were all that age I think it didn't really attract people of other ages to come and join us apart from uh, uh, Graham uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> who, who could open um, a many a supermarket in Cardiff as Jason Mohammed has <laughs> money in there for him I'm sure um, but you know the club weren't particularly bothered I'm gonna, I'd say they weren't really that bothered or probably didn't understand what we were trying to do at that point maybe I think it was probably or they maybe um, had more more on their plate really than yeah I can say I think it were probably um, a lot of different contributing factors as you said the the main thing being a a group of young lads getting together historically in a football ground only means one thing Um, we were never really wanting that they were suspicious Um, they were probably suspicious and and obviously now we'd be suspicious if something like that pops up and loads of other people were interested we used to get loads of interest from it they'd be like yeah I love what you're doing but I don't want to leave my scene Mm. here to come and join you in the FML because the fantastic media lower is a rubbish stand. Yeah. You get rained on it, when it's sunny. You get sunshine on you, and you know you can't see. If you sit over to the right, the crossbar blocks half yeah. the pitch and what have you. So it was like they didn't really want to leave the comfort of a seat they've been in for ten, fifteen years to to come and join us. And obviously, John Robinson wanted rid of us. So for two thousand ten, eleven, we um, we ended up trying to merge, didn't we? Yeah, I think we went, is that season we went back back to the Kilmer back in this. We did, yeah. Section. So we, we, well, I think as a group, I think three or f- four or five of us, to, as a as a decision, decided that from memory that the best thing to do would maybe the singing section over there. There's the another group here. Try join them together and see if that works. Yeah. Uh, and again, no one really spoke to them, so we just kind of went and almost yeah. almost like sailed over, didn't we? And planted our flag, if you like, and, and kind of. And metaphorical that, flag because we weren't allowed because <laughs> we weren't allowed <laughs> real flags yeah. at that point so again that that caused issues as well didn't it because all of a sudden there's a singing section who've been leading bits and bats at the the, the top end of the mm-hmm. Kilner Bank and all of a sudden they've got people 20 rows in front of them trying to sing and start songs and that, they're like what are they doing this, yeah, is, our, this yeah. is our thing here and so whenever we started a song in the middle they would start one at the back and try to sing over the top so there was never any cohesion or anything going on and you could see that our presence had annoyed them <laughs> so it was like we had, there was a bit of a nomadic nomadic existence at that point yeah I think again looking back when you sort of when you dissect what actually happened it was um, I think originally a lot of the people in the singing section were the, the obviously the people who wanted to come across and they, mm. you know yeah we had a lot of oh yeah that's a good idea but I'm happy where I am yeah um, Again, maybe just the you know how English people are tend to be you know rather than we'll, we'll, we'll let someone else set it up and if it looks good maybe in two years we'll we'll go across, you know especially at a football club it's quite difficult sometimes to stick your head above the uh, mm. the parapet and you know a lot of people fired a lot of shots, um, and it was just a case of us, us sticking with it as long as we could. Again, when we moved back to you know back to the Kilner, discussions probably could have been had with a lot more of those who sat further back and you know almost a truce um, come come to you know at that point if, if that would have happened you know things today might have been been different still um, potentially but at this point now from the cowshed loyal almost went into maybe a bit of a coma didn't it over it, the it, next couple of seasons it, it, it was always there to be fair yeah it was um, it was there but it was kind of like 
You wouldn't know. You were just there. you were just blo- now it was just blokes in seats in a stadium rather than trying to do anything. Yeah. It, it kind of had it beaten out of us almost, and then I at this point I went and um, sat at the other side. With yeah, you jump ship as well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> did yeah. So I, I left it before it got good. So it it, it got good because I don't I, know, but that's why it got good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Common denominator, <laughs> mate, was you. So I was bringing it down. <laughs> point I moved to the other side and but in 2013 you know at, at this point I used to hang around with uh, the Millbridge lot on away days you know a lot of fun and I was always trying to get them to come across at that point but the few I used to speak to used to say yeah we, we were well, maybe I think uh, Wayne did one used to come used to sit with us with his lad didn't yeah. at one point yeah but a few of the others were like yeah I sit with families over there and away days will go mad home games you know family time and stuff um but that changed in 2014. There was a, a rebirth, if you like, of not the cowshed loyal then, but Ollie. I'm North bringing you Stanley. in because you can now talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The North you, Stanley. We're old yeah. enough to start going to games now. <laughs> Just about, yeah. No, well, it's interesting you talk about before, um, obviously in 2008 and the period onwards, I was sat smack bang in the middle of the, of the well, it wasn't even the kill in the bank, whatever it was, then the Antich stand on the halfway line. And you did kind of notice from one season to the next, all right, they're there. No way, they're not there anymore. The kiln is loud again. And it, it was it was a little bit strange. And then when, um, obviously, the North Stand Loyal came about, that was when people, I think, really started to take notice because there was the visual aspect to it, mm-hmm. uh, something that had been sorely lacking. And, yeah, for me personally, it was an age thing as well. I'd, I'd turned, like... 15? Can't even add it. No. <laughs> <laughs> 12. I've just turned 12. No, uh turned 18 and um, football was a completely different experience then you know you could go enjoy yourself a lot more have a few pints that kind of thing and then when you see you know see an atmosphere see going on having somewhere fun, you want to be a part it, of it yeah it was completely different from being sat with family as well you know you can do that f- when you sat with your mum and dad you kind of like you don't feel like you can sing sometimes unless they're mm. doing it but well I, I, I sat with my grandma and it was great don't get me wrong because she was far more passionate than I was about, <laughs> about town and she still is to this day she still goes and sits in that same spot but you know, it, it was one time me and me and a friend of mine, Nathan, just came along and uh, you know we saw what was going on. And then the next game, I believe, was Millwall at home, and uh, we just sort of went went along, plunked ourselves in the middle of the of the FM lower. Um, it was the game where we scored a late winner. Um, I think it was a late penalty to win it, and just thought, yeah, this is a lot better it's than what momentum, we used to. Isn't it? That good memories and momentum kind of yeah helps things ignite, doesn't it? Mm. So. 2014. So what you had, Cosa, you had, uh, Cosa, Cosa, <laughs> Cosa. <laughs> Cosa. <laughs> Don't to take offence to that. <laughs> you got more hair for it. <laughs> but um, so pause. What what you get? Pause, Cosa. It's, it's gonna get <laughs> anyway, confusing if you're, on next, if you're on next season. It's gonna get really confusing <laughs> for me. Um, so you had groups coming together, and crucially, you had a club that all of a sudden was taking an interest. And I think when groups came together, there were more meetings and there were more experience of saying right we need to have more regular um, dialogue with the club and we mm. need to drive things home who were the sort of contributing members in that 2014 movement if you like who really sort of helped and obviously you were a big part but who else helped drive that um i think like you said the there's ben greaves mate of mine and he likes to think he did it all but I'm he'll sure take credit for he still all that. he yeah, still does yeah. as i'm <laughs> glad you introduced me as a founding member because he'll get really wound up by that um so if you could just Play that on loop three for me, four times. For me, because it's CLO8. I don't know this. CL, I, know, well, I don't recognise this CL14 thing. A lot of people say that, and I think because it was a full. We had the, as you say, we we sort of went away for, you know, probably twenty four months. It did feel like a new. It was a, a rebirth. Wasn't so it was it, sort yeah. of draw a line under everything that's happened. A phoenix. Yeah, you know. let, let's get a, a few of the big groups. Phoenix. Oh, could have been a name. <laughs> Uh, we got the. Uh, <laughs> if I'd have been around at the time, it'd have been a whole different thing. <laughs> oh. uh, but no, like you said, we got in touch with. Uh, I think it, it was sort of on down at the back. A few PM started flying around from, uh, you know, groups of people. I know, like you said, Ben and, and Dom as well, who's still involved today. Um, I suddenly got a PM saying, "Look, there's going to be a meeting at Canal Side. We know you were, you know, set set up before. We're interested. Do you fancy coming down?" And 
I thought, yeah, do you know what? Why not? Like you say, the club sort of had a bit of a change in how it probably viewed these sort of things. Mm -hmm. And we had the Millbridge, um, uh, that were sort of up and running in its heyday. Mm -hmm. um, again, on down at Mac, a good, a big presence on there. Yeah, good fun. Um, a, lot of, a lot of older supporters in there. Um, That's what you need, whereas instead of just one group of 18 to 24 year olds, all of a sudden you've got a spread, haven't you? Yeah. And, and I think what happens there is, say for example, we're now in our 30s, and if we see like at away games if we see a lot of 18 year olds in a corner singing having fun we just go now nah, we're going to go over here whereas if you see a mix and a spread you, you're more likely to kind of go and join in aren't you I think that's what it was yeah like you say um, a, a bigger sort of pool of fans um, you, you tend to like you say yobbles in corner well not going over there you know bigger pool of fans with different ages different experiences Hollywood. Um, <laughs> maybe a little bit more appealing to the club um, I know people involved in the Millbridge had done a lot of work with the club sponsored games yeah. so it was almost like we had a foot in the door yeah. and they were sort of quite friendly with Sean Jarvis already again through various social events so yeah, we, we almost had a point of contact Daz had a box uh, he used to hire a box every now and then mm. and they used to go into the box didn't they yeah, so, yeah. and it, it turned into more of a alright yeah we want it to be a group but in the first instance it was let's try create the away day experience mm -hmm. at home and it People came together. We had, um, I know, Scoffer got got involved. Um, How important had, was Scoffer? In the early days, uh, I mean, everybody knows what Scoffer were like. It was mentioned, you know, throughout social media. The yeah. guy could talk well. He uh, could sing, dance. He, he yeah, he was uh, <laughs> brilliant. He was yeah. just a, you know, a good a salesman for want of a better phrase. And I think he, that was his job, wasn't it? He was a sales. I think he worked in sales, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely had the gift of the gab, and him along with. Um, sort of my my input, a couple of others of input, uh, almost formed like a, a really mini committee. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Adam Roberts were involved at the start, oh, yeah. uh, and a couple of others, um, and we we did open up dialogue with the club. You know, we had some trial games um, again back in the north end to to sort of see how it went. Um, but at that point, yeah, all right, we had a foot in the door. We probably had a bigger pool of people, a little bit more sort of tactical. Uh, yeah, more experience. You had you had, um, had, had organisers there as opposed to lads having a go yeah, yeah I think it was a lot more organised a bit more of an, a, you know, an action plan really of you know we'll start small I think certainly from my point of view looking back 208 it was like, it were sprinting almost before you could walk let alone running I think you we know, had ideas of flags be, didn't we in game one you know, everyone going down with flags marching from so and so like, it were never going to happen you know um, but again looking back at that time um, would, you, would you say that maybe we maybe the maybe we kind of pulled the plug not so much pulled the plug but kind of let it lie too early do you think maybe uh, yeah possibly uh, maybe I think it got to a point where the club maybe got what they wanted and we did go away for a bit um, you know fair play it's kind of a, a different era like I said we, we've drawn the line under that and we, we sort of re-emerged as a new group with a, a bit more of a better plan um, but there were still the hallmarks of the problems we had bef we had before John Robinson was still there Again, another so say, how was that start in those trial games? Because I remember in those trial games there was a little bit of sorting. Maybe I think the first time the stewards maybe hadn't been prepped or something. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I think again, obviously Dino getting more involved, had a little bit more power, or maybe a little bit more say over how stewards acted within the ground. Um, I think at this yeah, point, I was trying to think when Dean forth. bought the forty uh, percent back. Because up until that point, Huddersfield had pretty much no say mm. in the ground at all, did they? Yeah. So John Robinson was. Unchallenged, if you like. Yeah. So he, he I think I, I think the attendance has sort of dropped. Not obviously not that season, but prior to that season, due to you know people Chris just not Powell. enjoying going anymore. Well, yeah. Chris Powell didn't help, but <laughs> people just not enjoying it anymore. Yeah, uh, and I think the club saw this as an opportunity to get the fans who like that sort of experience back. Mm -hmm. So I think they were a bit more supportive. Again, if we had you know when we got the shares back, probably a little bit more say on how the stewarding worked. Uh, but yeah. I, we still had a lot of problems. I certainly remember before the first, I think it was the first match of the season, Bournemouth at home, always rings a bell. Um, and the we, the 4 0, yeah. Um, we wanted to have, I think, streamers and the, the confetti. Yeah. And we'd bought some. Um, a cannon. We'd bought, no, it was <laughs> not a cannon actually. <laughs> we we, we literally <laughs> bought um, or made loads of shredded up paper and we wanted to put it into envelopes to put on the seats. All right. To, you know, it was there for people idea. to use. And we had to take an envelope 
to John Robinson on the morning of the game or the, the safety committee um, and say this is what we're planning to use is it safe so when you got to get an envelope passed by a safety committee that kind of gives you some of the sort of gives you an indication of how you know on top it was at yeah. times and we, we certainly had to prove ourselves and we knew that and again it were one of those where you know if we can prove that we can be um, responsible not yeah, not so a bunch self of barbarians almost, running around. It yeah. was, you know, let's not be running on pitch. Let's not be kicking yeah. lumps out of each other. Let's show them that we're there to support the club. Ultimately, that's what we were there to do. And it and it worked, which is the the great thing. Um, it did work. Yeah, we. I always remember the the challenge. I, I can't remember exactly who said it. Sean Jarvis, maybe. Um, when we were sort of aiming for the south stand, and it were fill the fill the north stand. Then let's talk about the south stand. I don't know if we filled it on a regular basis, but certainly numbers could show up to five, six hundred pretty much yeah. every week. And then for your bigger games, you know, I, I, I don't know if you were involved as much then, Ollie, but we all had a target of a thousand. Started it to get involved with a minimum about then. target. I was one of them who was, you could call me a tag along, whatever. But as, but that is exactly, it, it proves what you say about how it how it started to work yeah. because you, you do start to draw people if the difficulty before was people who'd been sat in their seats for 10 years and didn't want the change mm. all of a sudden mm. it's like it's like gravity it starts to starts to expand and people want to be a part of what we did the visuals were probably yeah. the most important thing as well because mm. yeah we're open so when you were there you actually you know again on down at my feedback we used to come in without asking for it it just used to happen <laughs> oh I couldn't hear him I couldn't hear him but at that time it weren't about yeah. being Could as you, loud but it were about enjoying yourself again do you think social media helped because obviously in 2008 oh, Facebook's in its infancy almost I think I joined in like 2007 or something so there weren't I remember not many mm. people being on 2008, 9, 10 there's not social media wasn't really used for that at that point Twitter I think must have come around 2010, 11 2011 yeah, yeah so it's you know they didn't have that do you find that social media helped spread that a lot more just as much as the visual in the ground Ollie you can jump in I think so, yeah, because it's word of mouth can only go so far, and and although they say word of mouth is the best publicity, you know, people might say to you, oh, you want to come and join us, you want to try it in here, but I think it it's right to say that it's it's very much visual, you know, you see it inside the ground, think I want to be a part of that, but you know, if you see other like-minded people on social media, for example, who are thinking the same thing and thinking, oh, you know, I might. I might go and try that that kind of thing that's why you almost get like mini groups of people saying let's go over for a game and try it groups of your mates who might sit elsewhere and think oh come on let's go over for a game and, and obviously try you it. need the club to be able to say you can transfer your ticket in and they I remember they advertised that a bit more that you could transfer your ticket and join them yeah that, that were a massive help cause as Ollie said you know you, you might sit in a different stand and you, you look across and you think yeah do you know what I fancy a bit of that oh I can't because my season ticket's in Kilmer or Riverside but actually the club opened it up and you could you could do a ticket exchange. Um, at that that point, you had to go down to the office and swap it over. So I don't think at that point it was as successful as what it could have been. But we again through discussions rather than kicking off, we managed to do it where you could just turn up on the day and use your season card for the Kilner to get in. Yeah, I remember um, yeah. Ben Greaves um, running around did outside the cinema. Do, did he have anything to do with it? Cow shed loyal. I thought it was more of a Johnny Come Lately. Who <laughs> <laughs> will be? He'll be, no, he won't he'll be biting he'll his he'll knuckles at that. He won't listen to it. Founding member. Um, he'll founding father. Damn yeah. for it. But the like <laughs> I say, the target were a thousand, and I remember him running around outside uh, the turnstiles where the cinema end is. Basically, sort of saying to people, got a crazy look in his eyes. Ben, so I think sure he scared that, a lot of yeah. people into if he just, just doing me, it. Yeah, I'd run off. Uh, but it was all about numbers. With his, with his shirt off as well. Jacket off, yeah. It were all about getting that thousand. That were the aim. If we get a thousand in there week in week out, the club would have to sort could. of take it more seriously. Um, which we managed to. I think Leeds were the obviously the biggest crowd of the season that season, um, and we I think we got about twelve hundred, thirteen hundred, which at the time were good numbers. You were, were really good. That, numbers. that stand only holds about seventeen, eighteen hundred. Yeah, it can't be more than eighteen hundred. Um, hmm. And even in our promotion season, you could. You know, you look back and what's really good is that it's on football gold or something already, isn't it? Championship gold or yeah. leads. And um, you look back and Heffley scores the winner. They've still got um, down, you know, that away and still got you know, still, but they've still got half of it covered with advertising, advertising and okay. stuff. So you can see. So that shows that the numbers are good, you mm. know, for that stand. <laughs>
to my favourite season in the history of Huddersfield Town Football Club since I've been watching since 1989 and my favourite season without a doubt is 2016-17 and that's when you guys moved into the South Stand I believe kind of more on a more permanent basis yeah I think barring we, one or two exceptions. I think we got the um, South Stand depending on numbers from away fans Um and obviously, if they were going to sell attendances throughout the ground, it would never fall. So, yeah, again, business decision from Dean Oil. If they can sell it out, and this we'll just swap. To, sorry to cut you off, but this is when the cheapest cheaper tickets came in, cheaper season tickets and cheaper tickets on the day. So we were selling, and our average all of a sudden has gone from fourteen thousand, mm. fourteen and a half under, you know, a really sky high thirty quid, you know, to sort of twelve, fifteen quid, and all of a sudden there's twenty thousand turning up. So all of a sudden now you've got the South Stand, you've got yeah. that huge divider that they had, which was a bit over the top at the time, wasn't it? Uh, but now all of a sudden you've got the South Stand. I think they moved it, depending on how many away fans. But Yeah, it used to move back and forth, yeah. But can you say who who were the main protagonists, if you like, in getting that South Stand? Who were the ones who drove that? Because I remember John Robinson being incredibly against that. Yeah. Uh, not to demonise John Robinson too much, but... I'm sure he was a nice guy. Apparently so, but you know he takes his job safety seriously. So you know, fair play. But we've who were the, who were the main people who went to speak to him and and really drive that? There's a couple of names that I apparently did. Um, uh, David Schofield at Scoffer was one of the keys, and obviously he can speak to people. You know, he's like you say, he's very gifted in the way he talks to people and makes people feel. You know, he's, you. you away days whatever were always better when Scoffer was there because you know he was such a good laugh you know and the, the, the whole atmosphere changes because everything's a laugh all of a sudden everything's fun and you know he him and a couple of others have gone to speak to John Robinson and obviously charmed him a little bit mm. and all of a sudden we've got the South Stand but I also understand that David Wagner was quite keen for us to have it as well Ollie yeah, I think it was. I think it was massive. It was one of those where I think all the stars kind of aligned in, in our favour. Is that a book for someone? <laughs> it's a song, isn't it? <laughs> Take that. Three stars aligned, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, obviously, Wagner's come in. Um, was was Dortmund's reserve team coach. He's very much used to atmospheres uh, in in Germany, in continental Europe, kind of thing. And um, I think he'd obviously been told a little bit about about what we were doing and. He was he was not going to be against it, was he? So if anything, he, he was for it, and um, and the idea of, of being able to create a proper home end for us, even if it was only half of that stand, was was something that he was obviously going to fully get behind because it allowed people to to properly invest in this vision that he had, and that was to to make the fans and the club the closest it's ever been, and ultimately he he, he succeeded in that with the help of Dino. What were the numbers like early pods? Because we've seen some early pictures with the TIFO and the flags, and it looks mm. great. You know what you've got looks really good. But what were the numbers like? Because I think initially you had a couple of um, not not massive take ups, if you like. But you you look at the start of the season, or the start of when perhaps you got yeah. the South Sand. It might have been at the end of the previous season to the end of that season, where it's absolutely packed. And you know, season ticket. You know, mm. there's probably a waiting list. I would imagine for season tickets in there. Um, what what was the difference there? Would you say it was more sort of the momentum on the field as much as anything? Or again, as all sort of said, I think it a lot of things coming together. The first um, few games, I think we had the as a, if, obviously for picture in your mind whilst you're listening, the the, the South Stand as a sort of thinner block right towards the end of the Kilner, and then like a, a, a main, what I'd class as a main block. We used to sort of get those two originally. Um, we used to fill the main block pretty well and back end of the the smaller blocks almost like a sort of triangle effect um numbers wise again a thousand ish um but i think we were given a lot more freedom you've, you've mentioned people actually going to speak to the club mm -hmm. um what what people don't always appreciate with with uh, with the cow shed loyal is how much work goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. you know we have um well, we have WhatsApp group chats. We had right back then. We had regular meetings, um, and five or six of us would get together. Uh, again, due to the mix of ages, mix of experience, you had your younger guys um, who wanted to just steam in boots first, and you know we want this, we want that. Can't Why can't we do it? Why can't we have it? Um, you mentioned, you know, obviously Scoffer were involved. Graham as well um, yeah. were, were involved back then, Not Jason, and yeah. um, they were the more sort of the father figures the the calming influence of right the old man, we've yeah. we've listened to <laughs> we've listened to what we want let's now we'll pitch that to the club 
in a bit more of a inverted commas sensible way than what you guys yeah. probably would be able to I think that's probably um, what we needed in the early days as well isn't it exactly like those kind of yeah. people around and um, that's really good to hear so 2016-17 like I say was my favourite season not only for what happened on the pitch but what happens off of it in, in that everything came together like Ollie you've said stars aligned which is probably a reasonable reasonably good description but and it's not just everything on the field it's not just the players that we've brought in have clicked it's not the team's not just the team spirit but it's the whole club has changed and also the whole club for the first time since probably Jacko Neil Warnock yeah. but in a, in a more of a different way it's all everybody's going in one direction even those miserable detractors in the Kilner Bank who sit there and will swear everybody's rubbish even they're going in the same direction the Gal Farm grown that disappeared is no for more. it's no more strange and times one thing that was great as well was the amount of uh, flags TIFO if you like that that all of a sudden has appeared in the south stand it's not just a case of a couple of flags here and there there's some really big displays you know huge displays who look which look brilliant there you know because i sit uh, in the upper tier at the side and you yeah. know i look across and i have a great view of you know you're, you're obviously at the other side to me but i have, I have a really good view of you know things going on over there and how things are unraveling you mm. guys are under flags so you probably can't see how yeah, it's going yeah. most of the time but i you know for me it was it was fun so you know, if the if so, if the game's dull for a bit, I would I would look over and watch you guys for you know a couple of minutes. It, it you know it was really good, really good fun. And how so? What Ollie? I think you're maybe you're both involved in this, but how long does it take to create something like those tifos that you've got? And do you need an artist? Maybe do you need like a lot of them are painted, aren't they? And yeah, we, we fire retardant, etc. What what goes on to make? Well, something like yeah, that? all all the material that we use is is obviously basically fire certificate worthy or whatever you want to call it um in terms of the actual planning process it can it can take quite a while to actually nail down a concept so you know we do often bounce ideas around in in the chats that we have about um about concepts for displays uh and then we sort of see if, it, if it's what the majority of the group want then we can start to look at either designing it ourselves or in in recent displays for the bigger ones we've um we've had help from others who've been We've been, you know, happy to step forward and, and give it a go. People who are far more qualified with these design programs than what we are, um, and and yeah, and then we sort of it, it all goes from there. Really, we 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 get bodies together. We we go down to usually the the gas club to to paint to set up paint, and that can be. Do they charge you for that, or is it just let you in, or? No, they've been get really the bar good. open and stuff. And that's that's exactly it. On a Saturday, we go down there. You know, as a group, most of us go down there before kick off and have a few pints. And they've been really good with us as well in terms of letting us set up a merchandise stall. So if people want to come and buy our stickers and t-shirts and stuff like that, or just come and say hello and say, you know, that they that they want to get more involved or whatever, that's where we are. Um, the Gas Club have been fantastic just, with us. Just on that, will that be there next season? So if people yeah. listening to this saying, you know, I won't mind one of those scarfs that you guys have, are they going to be there in the? Yeah, Gas if you come through the main door, we're always in the back right corner, okay. on the right hand side of where the projector screen is. Uh, we normally have a table set up there with all our merchandise. So the opposite to where the bar is, essentially. Yeah, opposite yes. corner to yeah. where the bar is, um, and that'll be there next season. Yeah, the Gas Club have been have been really really good with us. They've let us at first use the space downstairs where the stage is and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and yeah, we used to use the projector to obviously project onto the material and do it like that. Okay. And then now we've sort of moved to the upstairs because it's a bigger more uninterrupted space there's not the pillars that you have um so it's a bit more floor space for us um and yeah there's no real you know step by step to it we, we tend to just get a design figure out the best way to to put that onto material usually by tracing or whatever and then um we get like i say we get bodies down to paint it in and that's that's the way that we do it we don't we don't who's, do printed or anything like that. A lot of clubs do use printed printed displays. Um, who's the uh, tracer? Do you know the guy who, or, or girl who draws? Who's the? Uh, we all have a bash it really, don't we? It's it's not that difficult. If you've got the projector set up right, then you literally are just drawing around the line right. of the design that you see. Sometimes it's more difficult than others. You know, yeah. we've had times where we've we've who, messed up. Who who did bit, the hypno terrier? That's one of my favourites. Is the terrier with the the, uh, the well <laughs> ultra terrier as it has now been named, which uh, I like. Danny, which, I like Danny's hypno HTFC world hypno terrier. <laughs> hypno terrier is great. Uh, that that was one of his old logos, and we you know decided to, we we had it on a banner, and I think we ended up yeah went missing so we decided to do it on a bigger scale I think that one we actually drew freehand yeah that was freehand because it was quite a simplistic sort of more of a geometric design we, was, we gridded it yeah. and, uh, um, but for your more complex designs it's a 
it is a bit of a case of project onto a wall, Patrick draw Stewart your bit, pretty good, yeah. move you. Yeah. I mean, I've made it yeah. sound like it's pretty simple there, but it, it does no, take I'd imagine a lot. that's quite hard. It, it does take a lot of time and effort. And the thing is, we're, we're all perfectionists. We 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 know that if we put something out there, it's going to be judged, and it needs to be yeah. what we consider to be our best work. We don't put something out there in terms of big displays. We don't put something out there that we're not happy with, um, and that's the big thing because we're, we're our own worst critics. Yeah. I think. Have you thrown I, loads away then? Have you? Completely. There's been a couple that haven't made the cut. Yeah. Um, Aaron Moy. Yeah. I've got. <laughs> I a, that'd I've be got easy. A... There's no hair to fill in. No. It... Are, are we in a position now where I could potentially send the picture of that? <laughs> because that we is might fantastic. put that one yeah. later on. But we, uh... we were sort of torn whether to to try and do the detail on the face for one of these particular displays and um, free handing sometimes didn't work. Let's put it that way. But yeah, I'll. Didn't look like Doctor Evil, did he? Wasn't doing. But worse than that, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I remember. Like he was on the substance of some yeah. description, but um, I think we yeah. need a picture of that to, to send out with the. Uh, we'll uh, we'll forward it on. I've in, got it. Uh, yeah, I've got it. I've got a fantastic video where it pans and shows how good the rest of him is, and then <coughs> it gets to the face, and we just break down laughing. Yeah. And that's I can say that sounded bad, like we're taking the Mickey or whatever. But no, we we saw that and we're like, no, we can't put that out because people people. Right, the judges laugh. on what we do, you know. Yeah. We, you want to maintain a high standard, don't you? That's the quality. Yeah. When we put things like crowdfunders out, um, it, 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 um, it always sort of makes you feel that little bit more responsible because you know that people put their hard-earned money into into pop for us to do what we do. You know, town fans who who like us are so dedicated to the club, and that just sort of ups the pressure a little bit more to just do things that we, like I say, we are convinced is our best work. idea because during 2016-17 one thing that appears and Posse you're on it every time without fail because you're at the front are the GoPros at the front so whose idea was it to do the GoPros because some of those are great do you know where the club cut them through and show the singing and what have you the um, I think that were probably the groups that had those up you know we, we, we wanted again social media let's get more people involved let's try advertise um, what a good Sort of atmosphere we have not not just for the group but for town in general you know yeah. let's get fans involved i know certainly the club a lot of their things now are come and be a part of the atmosphere you know certainly from championship and two seasons in premier league we've we've got a bit of a reputation of having a good atmosphere yeah all right on last last season things on the pitch didn't help anybody and um, again as i said we are overly critical i'm sure you'll come on to it but the message that we put out towards back end of last season was mm -hmm. Almost us holding his hands up and saying, "Look, yeah, we we have been poor this season. We want to improve." Let's jump um, onto it then. So you mentioned there, two thousand seventeen, eighteen. There must have been ten, eleven, twelve sets of fans from other clubs came, and those that came to um, the stadium then went away saying, "This is the best home atmosphere in the Premier League." And how how did that make you feel? Because they're obviously responding to what's you're doing over in the corner and you know Crystal Palace have got this reputation of you know we went to Crystal Palace 3 no, we never heard a peep from mm -hmm. them and the Crystal Palace have got this reputation Liverpool have got this reputation which apart from European Knights I think is completely undeserved um, others Newcastle have got a reputation but I went all I heard with booze up there and there's a few clubs who've got reputations and a few are quite fierce with it as well um, how did that make you feel that the majority of the Premier League fans that were coming to the ground were actually saying this is the best place to be you know to listen to football fans on a Saturday awesome. um, proud without a doubt because it's something that you've helped create obviously um, with the help of all the fans who, who come in and, and make it what it is um, I think from from a group perspective we, we've always drawn inspiration and we're, and we're not really shy of that necessarily um, and we'd always looked up to groups like Palace who we thought were sort of five years ahead maybe a little bit more of where we were at that point and then all of a sudden, in, in, in that 2017-18 season, it was like, oh, forget that. 
we've kind caught of surpassed up to them. them a bit. Yeah. We've caught up to them, if not overtaken them. All of a sudden, people were coming and saying we were the best atmosphere that they'd experienced in the Premier League. It it does make you feel proud, and ultimately, it feeds into the momentum. Um, it, it feeds into this idea that um, I think you know from from a from a singing chanting point of view, if your block's full. If if the games are going well, as as for the large part of that season, you know we were in games and stuff like that. That that's great. But um, as you were alluding to earlier, from where you sit and from where three quarters of the ground sit, I think eighty percent of what we do is visual. So if people are seeing, you know, the the volume of flags is increasing, the spread of the flags is increasing. People are allowed to stand. As and well. and yeah, and yeah. we always refer to this this core that we have, um, who who sort of stand at the front of the. Black T-shirts. Yeah, and um, and we all tend to apart from try- Ben Greaves, who doesn't wear a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a few who go top, especially when we win. Um, but yeah, uh, giving Ben loads of stick on this, but we do like Ben. <laughs> in dust. <Well>. No, no, <laughs> no. He's a good he's a, he's a, he's, he's, he's Yeah, he's a top guy. Um, so yeah, we refer to this core that we have, where obviously it's, it's a group of us, and we sort of tend to dress the same way or whatever. Um, and really, it's when people start to see that expanding and you sort of see it as an expanse of influence if if you will but really we just always saw it as an expanse of a, a group of lads who were wanting to come and, and help out and, and help us you know when I mentioned before about when we do displays it's all about numbers it's about getting lads down and, and we do things two times quicker it's about people contributing ideas to displays to merchandise all that kind of thing and the 2017-18 season if perhaps the season before everything had sort of aligned it was where we started to really see the the energy move in the, in the right direction, and um, I think you, you sort of saw that you know come come the end of the season. Um, obviously, we ended up staying up, and and it was a very very memorable season. Um, the Tomin score was fantastic. Yeah. Was like everyone, not just your end, but everybody was going mental. Yeah. You know, around the stadium, and I don't think we've ever seen the stadium like that. But no, hardly anybody's left, which is unusual for. 90 minutes nil nil not the best game there's a still the ground's mm. still full mm. and Tommins puts that in and it's not you guys going mental it's 24,000 well yeah, it was like a mini 000. pitching version yeah. by the, I think by even the, Wagner got involved the, didn't he yeah, yeah they all did yeah. they all ran to the yeah. corner and even in that corner they see the videos and they're all going mental in the ex-family mm. stand you know and it, it's, it's, it's it, brilliant it's really interesting brilliant. I think Ollie touched on it there about other fans um, and again that goes to back up your point, we were, you know, right at the end of games, people, we were losing, but people were staying with it. The the atmosphere, all right, we've kind of taken a lot of the plaudits for when it's good, and on the flip side of that, we take, a, you know, criticism when it's bad, but we we are a, a core, which Ollie, which Ollie sort of says, um, at the front, there's maybe, what, 50? Yeah. 50 seats, but within that 50, there's maybe no more than eight, Maybe ten. So there's you, isn't there? Of the us, front? as you know, like yeah. what we'd class as, I won't say committee members, but that sort of thing, you know, so the organisers. Yeah, yeah. Over, yeah. Um, so there's you, there's Ben, there's the one that sits between your Yeah, uh, another Ben Smith. Smith you know, we Smith, yeah. we sort of take the lead, but without the support of the other, backing you, you up. know, what fifteen, sixteen hundred within that stand, we'd you know, we'd yeah, be just, just 50, fifty guys 50 stood at the front. Yeah. If that sometimes, yeah. um, but not only the guys in the south stand, the Kilmer, the well, that, that's it even the you know the, the, the north stand yeah. is, you know when you're in there you can the clappers alright not everybody likes them but you've got to admit they get people involved um, and the atmosphere for all four stands has been phenomenal certainly that season when we when we stayed up and alright yeah we may have been the catalyst for that but you don't you don't everybody, carry on it was the whole stadium it was, I think just, you know everybody got involved and it was just it were sometimes I don't know about you Ollie but You'd, the whole ground would be singing and, and I personally got a little bit emotional yeah. almost it was almost like we've created this it was it's not a word better than anybody else created stand it, up so if you love the town yeah, which was the took one that got you know towards fine. the end of the season and, and particularly in the last season it ended up getting a bit overused which was a shame but when you see that and when you see a stadium on two sides like towards the fantastic media all just rise to the feet and all of a sudden you've got 20, 22,000 fans all singing the same thing and you think, we've never had this no. before. This is uncharted territory for us. So like, just enjoy it. Just just enjoy it. And yeah, it, it does fill you with pride. Mm. Um, and as you touched on, we, we're perhaps the catalysts, we're perhaps the instigators, but 
by no means do we try to take all the credit you know it like i keep saying i think things just just came together um and we've, we've just got to try and carry that on into yeah. next season and hope that the feel good factor does come back because if it does then then it'll certainly help things on the field <laughs> I'll bring in my first tweet as well to have got some Twitter questions at the end as well but I'll, I'll this fit into the um, agenda if you like so HTAFC Dreams has, has sent a message about 2018-19 I thought because he's better than me with the stats of last season you know with three wins how many goals? 15, 16 not, not goals? Not more than 20 You scored a goal? Yeah, hardly <laughs> any, well, about three of them were at home but we, we hardly scored at home I think any atmosphere in any country would have suffered at this point. Um, you guys felt your standards slipped. Mm. I, from watching it, thought that you did well to keep it going to a level. Or the whole, st- you know, and it's not just you guys. Yeah. The one, you know, the kill the bank to the side, and uh, in where I sit, the upper tier, there's you know the far corner. They get involved mm. sometimes, and the lower tier, the, the you know, I used to call it the jungle back in the day. You know, they get yeah. in, they get yeah. involved, and I thought, in light of what we'd seen on the pitch, like you say, in England, it's very much what goes on the field dictates what goes on off the field so I thought in light of that I thought it was a, it was a good effort um, you guys felt differently though I think if you take it a step back and look at general football atmospheres yeah probably a lot better than I we... should just say HTFC Dreams' question was could you explain how difficult it was it was very difficult it's, it's like all else you, you, you go to football to enjoy yourself you enjoy it when you're winning you know I'd bet that most fans would rather see the team top of League One, League Two than struggling in Premier League because you're turning up each week, you're enjoying it, you're seeing goals, you're winning, you have a better time. It's just as it is. It was difficult, you, you, especially as soon as with the lack of goals. I mean, if you if you're in games and you you four three, it's an exciting game. You, you may be losing one. If Cosy was here now, um, he would say the worst thing about that season was if if you were playing somebody and they scored in the second minute, like Everton did on Jan's first game. You knew the game. Was that over. were it, and that was the difficult yeah, thing. We was... always tend to have in stand anyway a good 10, 15 minutes, but that's nail on the head. As soon as anybody scored against us, it well, that's it. We've <coughs> won, we've lost. So it was really difficult to try and bounce back from that. All right, yeah, you might have a spelling game where you're on top and you get a little bit of momentum that mm, way. It's but sad even then. I mean, the the nicest word that I could use to describe English crowds in general is reactionary. So you know, like you say, it's if, accurate. Yeah, if things are, if things are going well on the field, they'll happily get behind you. Even if the score's nil nil, even if it's been a poor game, if you start to push a little bit, they'll get behind you. But if if you can see to go in the first fifteen minutes as we did so often, it kills the vibe of the rest of the ground. But the, the principle that we've always had is that it shouldn't kill our, you know, we should keep going regardless. You know, from the formation of the group, when, you know, it was Yeovil Town and we drew 0-0 on a Tuesday night, it, to where we are now, we're playing, you know, Man United at home and we've just gone to go down. You've got CLO8 there and your T-shirts. Are so <laughs> <still>. <laughs> Phoenix, isn't it? Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. Um, but, but, yeah, um, I've completely lost my <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I do that. No, I do that. Um, <laughs> but I do that. But yeah, it's it's difficult when you can concede an early goal, but we always thought we've got to carry on regardless because that's what we're going to be judged on. Um, and it's no good having a having a sort of silent thirty minutes and then we score a goal out of nowhere and it's and like, then uh, you look like hypocrites, don't you? Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's it. And we have a we have enough of a repertoire of songs and stuff to try and keep people going. Motivation. I'm going to bring I this think... question forward on that. What is your favourite song to sing? Because there were two. There's two for me, and they're both both daft. But the the, the old classics, you know, those were the days. Smile a while, you know. Not not really counting those, you know, sort of traditional, you know. But what are your? Or give us a H. Nothing like that. But what are your favourite sort of songs that you sing? There were two for me in 2017, 18. That, and I think we 
sung the other one in 16, 17 as well away once or twice, but it didn't really take off. But there were two songs for me in 17, 18, which I used to used to stop watching the game and watch you guys because it, it looked like a lot of fun in there when you were doing it. But what are your favourite songs that you do? Or yeah. have done, or even have done in the last sort of three years? Mine, we sung this a lot during the promotion season for obvious reasons, but was When Huddersfield Town Go Up Again because you right. you do that and then you get to the bit and everybody's sort of jumping the up. Gary Roberts song nah, 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 for nah, the nah, 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 loyal. Yeah. yeah, and that was... Often that was, the Torres. Because, again, it comes back to this thing of it being visual. People are watching us from other stands and seeing a group of 20 lads going absolutely berserk at the front of the stand and thinking, what the hell are they doing? But for us, we were having the time of our lives. It was mint. This was... This is everything that being a football fan was meant to be, and um, yeah, that was the and away days as well. If the whole thing is about sort of cre- recreating the rowdiness of away days, it was a uh, a Millbridge classic, is that when Huddersfield Town got yeah, well, these two yeah. on the bus? Yeah, uh, it's Dig One did it, started it, I think. Just mm. out of interest, but yeah, that's that's a good one. Pause. Um, I I quite like the the old Ian Dunn rewritten for. <laughs> For Aaron Moy, um, you know, he's got no like lead the, up. Uh, Oasis version. I like Ollie, you know the Oasis version, don't you? Yeah, the, it's the good I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> you're, you're the new Cosy. Or the Pos- Posse. Da- Posse. Daniel yeah. Posse. Um, I think he's a funny one, his songs. Half the world away for half those who don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can, as you all know, Matt, as we've discussed before, we came on air, some of the songs that we used to pen. Yeah. Uh, you can you can write a, a song in your mind and think, do you know what? That's an absolute. That's going to take like off. Like Jim Spencer. Uh, like the old Jim Spencer. Maybe you could give everyone a rendition of that. Maybe, maybe I don't one know. day if people are um, <laughs> And you have it in your mind and you think, do you know what? That that is a good song. And you try it out and it don't it don't click. Um, what was it? Well, one good example. One, I think, one you Ollie, can. Sorry. I think, sorry. Go one, on. one good example. I think where it, it's it's the opposite. It sounds. Uh, you say it in your head and it sounds dreadful, but all of a sudden everybody's doing it and you think this sounds great. Was in the World Cup last year with the Atomic Kitten with Gareth Southgate. Mm. That when when you I think you sent me the lyrics to it and I think I'd heard it. I'm like, what are the lyrics that are singing? I was like, singing in my head. I was like, that's absolutely oh, that's, horrendous. Yeah, yeah. And then I saw a couple of thousand people singing it. I'm thinking, do you know what? I quite actually quite like that now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The stuff that has taken off that really has sort of been a little bit of a joke. Of, yeah, almost, almost like the yeah. Callan Grant one. You know, he's electric yeah. sound from that one was kind of just a bit of a people aren't gonna. You know, I always oh, find it's catch, catchy right. tunes, uh, memorable catchy tunes. The tune is definitely than, uh, yeah. like when he's tried to do the Steve Mounier one at the start of last season, which was the na 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 hey Steve Mounier, Steve Mounier one. That that never it caught never off. got that off. It never took one. off, did it? Because really? that was Smithy was wanting that to be yeah, HTFC yeah. instead of Steve Mounier, and I kind of hijacked it out. <laughs> no, I was like, no, I'm singing Steve Mounier, and I probably should take the ball. <laughs> I mean, a perfect example of that were the Heffalier. Yeah. The Heffler song were again Aston Villa a bit away, of a wasn't daft it? Yeah. group joke, you know, the, in a group chat. Oh, why don't we sing this for FLA on paper? Why? It sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Actually, yeah. in stand, the song at the time were in it the chart. Do you, know, do you just, remember how that originated? It, took off. it, it was just, just, wasn't it a group of sort of three lads who were on a lads' holiday that summer in, so, in yeah. Spain or something, and they filmed themselves in a yeah. nightclub singing it. I thought, mean, oh, that's quite funny. And it kind of went semi viral among town Twitter. But next thing you know, you've got lads who are singing it all over. It's, that, that was just again, such it's a, momentum, isn't it? Because he, he comes on at Aston Villa. He's not starting, he comes mm. on at Aston Villa. The ball whacks him in. People say his backside it was more of the rib cage, but he, he, and then goes in the net and he's mm. flying in front of you doing his claw and what have you. And yeah. then all of a sudden there's this new song going, and it's good memories like that help to push it on as well. Funny you say that the the Christopher Schindler, you know, the best defender in the world. <laughs> da, da, da. I remember, I remember I, Matt, um, Martin Margotson for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just about my time. Just I remember st- getting up to sing it. I, I thought oh, I've, I've, it'd be a good song this, and I got up to sing it, and I think he scored from with from a corner within. Yeah two or three minutes of it starting and it had kind of just sort of got going a little bit then he scored yeah and it were almost then oh the momentum everybody everyone's knew singing. it everyone's singing it do you remember the job uh, done you know do you remember it's... the oh, Tommy Smith Tommy Smith Out again we just, just a nothing chant who I, I, I think I, can't I think it would probably do to me and, or me and, or me and Dan started. Nettleton just started singing oh Tom under our breath like Tommy 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 and then next thing you know there's about 10 lads around doing it and then five minutes later the whole stand's singing it and he's I'll tell you a story about that I on the old I think it was the old rivals down at the Mac I used to say because Man United did that for Andy Cole mm-hmm. initially it's um, Crocodile Rock isn't it yeah, yeah, John. Yeah. and I, I said on there why don't we do this for Barry Horn and yeah. I, you know, I, t- I tried to start it in the jungly bit and no one was really giving it any mm. sort of thing and I thought alright I'll sit down <laughs> <laughs> and um, so over and then I went to Bournemouth away and there's a uh, not Bournemouth uh, Barnsley away and I think it probably that 4-2 it 
beating the that Vato we took game, with the Millennium yeah. shirt on yeah, and yeah. petrol yeah. green and what yeah. have you. And there was a guy in there doing an operatic version of that, and I was like, he's doing that song that I said, and it was proper like Russell Watson. Oh, is it Russell Watson? The <laughs> English thing, and he's like, oh, <laughs> proper like whaler, and it was absolutely brilliant. But again, good day, sunshine out. You Maybe know. it just took someone to sing it a little bit better. Yeah. Than yeah. So, yeah. Where's Cosy when you need it? Yeah. Uh, the the songs are obviously the most important thing. The noise, the colour, and the banners for me are secondary. If you can nail down noise, you you. 80% there for mm-hmm. me Turn and, and songs are a big part of it and I think sometimes we maybe rush the songs next season and aim is maybe we to, to slow them down and, also, and I think go through we, them a little bit slower it's a question later is um, that, so we'll come to that if things aren't particularly going well we, we do have a tendency to occasionally perhaps bin them off a little bit too soon whereas sometimes you are just waiting for that reactionary moment like you said with the Schindler chant mm. if he scores or whatever oh, that's all it might take you know we're probably going to have a couple of new players next season or whatever to be singing songs for and people might not get behind them at first but you know when Tommy Elphick nods in a 90th minute winner against Derby on that Monday night all of a sudden <laughs> everyone's going to be you. singing go on go go on, on, <laughs> I've actually I made one didn't I for Tommy Elphick but I can't remember what it is so <sighs> I put it on the on group chat. Yeah, but yeah. Well, stay tuned, listeners, for for that for a Tommy Elphick <laughs> chant. My favourite two chants of that season were S- Scott Malone, which was taken from that was Fulham, just a blatant robbery. From, yeah, it was yeah. a blatant robbery from Fulham, and they bla- and they robbed it from Celtic. Yeah, um, and another one which I think eventually was robbed from Celtic was uh, the Last Christmas. Yeah, that were a good one, that but was. very I... seasonal. Yeah. Can't really so, sing that yeah, in July. That's what I mean, I think he started in sixteen seventeen away at Chef Wednesday. I think Ollie. I think we, I think we might have had that one before Celtic, you know, mm. because they started singing it about Brendan Rodgers, and he's not been there. He wasn't there before Wagner, was he? And we sung that about Wagner over over that first Christmas. I'm sure. Yeah, Chef. Because uh, it's so obvious, isn't it? You know, but yeah. it, it was it was Chef Wednesday. Yeah, I'm fairly mm. sure. It was yeah. Chef Wednesday. I know, sorry, just I know we're talking about we're probably going off piece a little bit on your agenda here. No, now, we're at the end of it now. Um, <laughs> the, the one of the, the biggest issue with the songs is trying to find some originality. It's so easy to hear a song do on you YouTube and copy it. And do you find it really annoying when people just? It's one thing that really annoyed me at the end of last season, and I don't know why it did, but it did. I think I'm on to you, Ollie, on WhatsApp about it. Was when sure. Norwich started singing "La La La La" the Liverpool yeah, thing. and, and Cardiff like, sing it. Come on, Napoli you know. originally. And, and Liverpool, America, yeah, Liverpool yeah. stole it from Napoli. Yeah, so don't well, get me wrong; you need to take inspiration from I think from other clubs. It but becomes just... obvious based on social media and stuff nowadays when you have hijacked something. Does it annoy you when like you, you start a song like Michael Heffler? And I'll, I remember reading so, someone about fifty other clubs had stole it, and then all of a sudden Everton were doing a in the newspaper we're doing a thing to try where did this song originate from and oh it must have been Huddersfield and, and it, I mean you know, obviously don't usually is. get the credit but yeah the, is it, do you find it boring when you turn up and all of a sudden they're going someone else is going duh, 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 and it's like no but and then, it depends what it is like, do you um, feel like you then can't sing it because they're singing it or do you just sing yours over the top or? I mean it becomes a bit of one-upmanship, one-upmanship. Yeah. It's, oh we started that so no one else can sing it and do you know what and on that I'd rather Team, I'd rather English atmospheres be better. So you know, let's not say we started a song, no one else can sing it. They started that, but copyright. Come on, let's let's try to be original and and whilst we think of new songs, we try to be as original as we can. All right, yeah, we copied the Scott Malone, but it were a good song. So Everything why not? It was a great song. Yeah. Everyone um, sort of has their own club anthems as well, and yeah. nobody's gonna nobody's gonna copy them. Um, it's obvious now that you can see on social media when something's made it big in the UK out of nowhere in terms of the chant or whatever. And people start jumping on the back of it, um, but in terms of simple stuff, obviously everyone sort of has the same repertoire in that sense. But I don't know, what do people want? Do they want you to write your own guitar in for it and stuff like that? You I've seen the guitar. That, that guitar they've got at the Cricket World Cup's amazing. Do you know what? The they, guitar. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. He's great. Um, or however many. He's very there good. Are. At, they are very good. It, at it. It's fun. Um, you can't see that happening next season. Cricket tire and clappers, can you? Uh, it's one Not of those football. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be a bit bizarre, but yeah, yeah. It's funny though the fan zone and um, the the club are looking be good to, the fans, to get up. I mean, it would be nice to maybe for the club to ask us and have some input in into that because I know certainly at Liverpool, um, you, you probably saw before the Champions League final the, they had a, a fan zone out there, um, and the bloke were you know playing the songs on the guitar and they have that pre-match yeah, yeah. post-match where they are yeah I've seen it that. just helps to spread the, the word and you know the the, the songs because uh, sometimes it is hard to get a song going because you have to persist it's hard to spread a song 
mm. between you know within two thousand people. Especially if, if you like, um, like Ollie said, you get you go have four or five pints before a game, and someone starts singing, and you like, what's that? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, sometimes obviously facing backwards, sometimes you can see people almost. You know, yeah. like you do that thing if you look a bit closer, you can you can hear better. Obviously, they kind of like mouth. Um, yeah. They're sort of like looking at you to look at your mouth and. If something then happens in game that distracts that, the song can just flop. So, so it's we should mention as well at this point that what we try to do as a strategy for promoting new songs, and we'll probably do this throughout the summer with the new stuff that we come out, come out with, is um, if it's a tune that's already been done somewhere, we, we'll put it put a video together where we do that and we put sort of our our lyrics over the top on, on the video. Like a karaoke thing pretty much like a, I didn't want to say it but like a karaoke <laughs> but then you put that out and then people can at the very least listen out for it and sort of half know what the words are and then all it takes is one one person on a row or whatever to be singing it and other people hear it and, and, mm. and it catches on mm. um, I mean when you think about it a lot of our repertoire has sort of come from the last two or three years and yeah. that's a testament really to the, you've just got to persevere with stuff I think um, I think songs <laughs> coming in and out of fashion as well you've spoken about the older songs for, for those, me personally those were the next, days doesn't get much of an airing no next days, season they're sort of songs that as a group we want to try and bring back a little bit more we've got the modern again inverted commas European style ones you know you sha la 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 yeah, la I, I, forgot, I, I, I do like young, what, uh, oh, what a Night as well oh yeah. since I was young might actually you be know. my favourite yeah uh, I think it'd be nice us. next season to, to get down but again that harks back it, it's not just a thing that's not happened this season it, go back in time and realise why that's happened because we had four, five, six seasons of no singing whatsoever. Yeah. Mm. So you've got to think, you know, those, those kids that were, yeah. you know, just getting into it, 12, 13, 14, wouldn't have had any new songs or the old songs even being sung. So we're almost, we've almost missed a generation of who people who probably be now the early 20s who've not really had that experience at football, which is yeah, again what we're trying to do. Thing, yeah. You know, we have, we have a section... Uh, just to to the left of us of of kids of you know sort of early early teens and they're the kind of the people that we need to influence because you know let's be honest no one's getting any younger I won't reveal my age on on tape but I don't want to be doing this in another 10 years you know the thing is obviously you need people to carry it on the core that we talk about it can get pretty rowdy in there but what you hope is that the kids that are of, a, of an age where they can see it and they want to be a part of it and they can be influenced, eventually they make their way over. And there's there's certainly enough of, at that age that are, that sort of stand around and certainly sing along. Mm. Who you think, well, give it give it three or four years and they'll want to be part of the part of the core part of the block that we have. And I think as a teenager, you like to do that, don't you? You like to stand there and you like to have a laugh, don't you? And then eventually you kind of slowly sneak in it yeah, back. And yeah, you know that's, 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 that's I mean, even this season we've managed to increase numbers. After back in the last season, we were doubtful, but as we've we've been you know, allocated some, a bit of a bigger section and filled it, so, so we're obviously doing something. An right. interesting question is: last season, there was a change. Of, well, since it in the Premier League, there's a change away from that huge covering. You know, that separated home mm. and away fans. How have you found the? Um, it's almost like a gate, isn't it? I can't remember. It's like a ra- it's rail, isn't it? That comes down. How have you found that that rail with? The away fans. There's never never seems to be any problem. I'm sure there's a mm. little bit goes back and forth and what have yeah. you. But how, how have you found that? And right, how it's lined. Well, how do you think that all... in it pretty much? So there would never really be any bother because you're just about fine with it. I witnessed it firsthand when. Um, do you think it improves it though? Do you think it improves the atmosphere as oh, well because you're closer? I don't massively. think, it makes, I don't think no. it makes too no. much of a difference really. You you still get the same sort of people that were there. If, if anything, you've got lads to perhaps a little more of the casual type who want to have a pop mm. who would feel a bit more confident doing so knowing there was 20 foot of tarpaulin between them and the away <laughs> fans as opposed to them being within literally punching distance but um, yeah it, I, I think it's improved the um, aesthetic of the stand definitely, yeah, definitely but in terms of how it affects us as a group I would say it doesn't really because we're not close enough to it and we don't tend to because you guys are at the front in the middle front and centre exactly yeah and yeah, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you might be getting a bit of a bit of can't swear, can I? Off other fans, um, slaver. Yeah, it might be getting a bit of a bit of lip from other fans, and then you you score, or you equalise or whatever. United's a good example of that, mm. and yeah, you do tend to sort of react to that, and you, that's the nature of of football fans. It's tribalism in it, and that's what gets the blood pumping. That, that Man United game was probably 
an example of a, a great atmosphere because we went one nil down. Everybody thought it was done and dusted, mm. but the the atmosphere of that game was was excellent. The I the Man United game and the game before it, I can't remember who it was. Leicester. Were it Leicester? The second half of that and the yeah. Man United game were possibly two of my favourite atmospheres. Certainly the Man United game. Um, like you say, we, we'd gone behind, we'd come back. It were almost it were almost one of those games where people were just there to enjoy it. They were, again another thing that we Dean want Hoyle's to promote next game, season. Dean Hall's next season, yeah. Uh, to promote last season, were um, people waving flags whilst game were on. Again, another visual that we want to encourage more next season. We we do spend a lot of time putting flags out in the stand for people yeah, I've to seen wave. Yeah, go down and pick them up. Um, and go down, don't you? Yeah, we actually put them out now, but you know a lot of them get left down. Fair enough, if people don't want to wave them, but. Uh, we had quite a lot of good feedback. The flags going during the singing is another, you know, that's what happened in Europe. If you look at stands behind goals, it's, it's going throughout. Yeah, Dresden have got um, a really good one with it. That's another thing, like I said, we want to improve on next season. But the the, the feel good factor to almost came back a little bit for that game. Um, a celebration of our time in the top flight. Really. It, was, it was more yeah. in case as well. We're, we're town, we'll still be here next season. Let's yeah. just have a laugh. I think. Going back a little bit here, if you want to look at um, a couple of games, even though they were they were three months apart or whatever, that were turning points for the for the group. You look at that Brentford game, um, that last game of the season when yeah. we got pumped five one by him or what? Was it five nil? I don't five. think he scored. Yeah, did we not? Oh, no. Poor Lloyd was uh, picking yeah. the ball out. Wasn't when you he? look at that, the atmosphere for that was absolutely incredible yeah. out of nowhere, and you know, then we had Brentford first home game of the next season and. Beat them two one. Yeah, we beat them two one, and I think the transformation in terms of the numbers that we had mm. in and around the, you know, when we where we plonk ourselves was was clear to see. But then it was just such a such a launching point, such a launching point. Yeah, that um, everything, all the hard work that had gone in over that summer, um, and you know the, the fact that it was absolutely glorious day and we were filled with this optimism the food festival was on as well wasn't it up in few bites always helps doesn't yeah, it yeah it did um, we'd made about 11 signings and everybody was feeling feeling very optimistic about the season rocked up went 1-0 up you know incredible incredible atmosphere after that and then obviously they equalised and uh, perhaps a few people were thinking oh here we go they're going to turn it on and, win. and then when we when we won and then it was like that was obviously the first home game of that season. Then we went away to Newcastle and won. Then we, you know, we took numbers Villa. to Villa and got that draw. And then we came home, and the Two atmosphere games, was it? absolutely mint. For oh, I think Barnsley, Barnsley, yeah. Johnny Oaks, and it was a case yeah. of you know win, and we know we're top of the league. Um, and yeah, the Just atmosphere was there, mint for that whole game. Uh, and yeah, we scored that last minute winner, and that's what I mean you know I said about the stars aligning I think the start of that the season was just such yeah. a we couldn't possibly fail under those circumstances basically so enough of the past what's what's happening in the future with the cowshed loyal so, main aims for the future, obviously, continue to build on what we've already got. Like I've said, um, we've we've expanded the car. We've a few people have moved away out, but we've actually sort of increased the the hub, shall we call it, uh, down at the front. We've got um, we've got display lined up. Opening game of the season, full stand display. Um, we we'd love to do a display every week yeah, we but logistically and monetary it would just be impossible um, like I say we have a small group of numbers who can actually get down to, to paint the displays they do take a long time I mean mm. some of the, the, the big surfer flags are 20 metres long you know finding somewhere to put it is difficult enough <laughs> um, so yeah we want to we want to I think focus on the quality like I yeah. said um, we don't like to I'd rather do personally rather do three for a season good ones than ten Medium sized ones. Yeah. What's been yeah. your favourite display though? I haven't really asked that, but in terms of display, which was the best one? I'm biased in this because this was the one that I designed, but you know the one where it was the uh, Unity one and it was mm. all the players linking arms? Oh, yeah. Um, yes. That was the one that I think, I don't know, maybe it was just because I put a lot of work into designing it and stuff like that. That, that was, was good. That was one that was done within the group. I, think I like the Yorkshire Rose, uh, Yorkshire's number one. I think it got a lot of social media attention because it was probably his first, what I class as a difficult design. It had Various it shared, elements. They had a banner at the front. Area, the roads yeah. were actually cut out. Um, they had the the flags. 
Um, so I, I must admit, I think that one was probably my. I think my as favorite. well, it's important to point out at this point that even the best groups in Europe don't do displays for every games, and they will do ones that they're happy with and ones that they're not. Um, they told me not to mention them before we came on, but obviously I go watch Milan a few times a season, and they they've got one of the oldest ultras groups in the world, and obviously know a few people who were a part of that, and you know they they have a lot bigger numbers than what we do, and they have a lot better contacts in terms of materials, and they can call on you know 30 people at the click of a finger who will come down and put hours in mm. and they set up for displays particularly like the derby game against Inter and games against Juve stuff like that they start setting up the morning of the game when it's in the evening and you know they can be in the stadium for six hours making sure everything's right they've got a guy who's going and putting putting printed instructions on every single person's seat so they know the exact timings of when stuff's meant to go up. Mm. That's the kind of thing Sounds like a set list for Elvis, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. It, but that's the kind of organisation that I won't say we're up against, but we aspire to. Yeah, I, I don't think people realise, do they, how the length that you go world. to. to you it, know. It's little things sometimes that can be annoying. I mean, you, you talked about the you know the, the psychedelic terror, as you called it. Yeah, terror, yeah. You know, you look at the, the pictures from that. And it, 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 it's one of things. my favourites. Is the um, again, you will look and you know, I thought it were brilliant. We looked and there were small pockets of fans that weren't holding the card up, for example. So oh, it just yeah. kind of detracts yeah. a little bit from the display. You know, you've been down there maybe two or three hours putting this stuff out, and <laughs> you know, all right, we're a night game, so some people might have just been a little bit and late. Johnny, but Johnny in C fifty five is not held. He's his not held his thing up, and it, <laughs> as that's it seems. Track them down, you know. Oh, <laughs> a few of them missing though can really. So that's detract the, from the display. So I think this season, what we're probably going to do is promote them a little bit more, ask people yeah. to get in a little bit earlier. We started and, to do that with um, a few of our, our last Maybe week. a bit but more. Maybe we can never get the megaphone. Oi. So <laughs> get a, in. There's a culture though among English fans, and I'm I'm one of these to be fair, um, who like to go and and have a pint before the game inside the ground, and don't necessarily want to be at a seat twenty minutes before kick off, ready to yeah. hold up a display. Um, whereas in Europe that's not really the case because you can literally drink inside the ground yeah. um, and you know for us yeah sometimes people might be staggering into their seat a couple of minutes before kick off you can't really tell people how to enjoy the game or whatever all we can do is make sure that the word's out there in advance enough yeah, for everybody to enjoys the game if they want. of course they do exactly. yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah I think yeah in terms of aims for the future we want to be more consistent in terms of atmosphere vocally in terms of our displays, we always want to push ourselves. We want to be more and more ambitious. We, we're always talking about doing a full stand display. Mm. Maybe that will come, you know, when we go over, whether it'll work logistically, one that goes over multiple blocks. We'll, we'll see if that happens. Um, and I, I think from even a merchandise point of view, don't want to sound too commercial, but we, we've got some new designs coming out for T-shirts and stickers and stuff like that. So it's just a case of spreading the word in that way as well. And ultimately, I think the most important thing, aside from all of that, is that we always actively encourage people who see what we do and you know like it and think that they've got ideas and they want to be a part of it or whatever, come down to us. Come down to us before the game. We will, on we will be stood there. Well, just you? grab one of us, introduce yourself and, you know... And you say, and and goes from there, man. The the amount of people that have sort of become acquainted through that, or even on social media, send us a message, you know, drop us a tweet, whatever, uh, and and get involved because you know we we're, we're always then, and and the more people we have on board, the better, and the more ideas we have, the the faster we'll grow. So a question that's coming from Cosy, not Posy, in on Twitter was. In ultras, the Spain. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Just stood outside. outside yeah. Uh, the ultras in Spain don't really care about the result. Uh, I thought we did really well last season in there, considering the, you know, the product on the pitch. Does it worry you that if, because you know, obviously Premier League, Huddersfield aren't really mm. expected to be in the Premier League, so being in there is almost like a bonus. Whereas Championship, you maybe view as home a little bit more, you know, in in some areas or some people do. So do you think maybe that? If we're seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, or lower by Christmas, do you think things could potentially turn in there? It may be another difficult season, or do you have plans to keep it going? And do you think the cowshed law is strong enough to to think, weather something like that? I think as a group, certainly there's no risk of us going under or disbanding. In you know, we will always strive and try our best as a as a group at the front to to keep the atmosphere going. We can't control what happens elsewhere you know as i said we are 50 60 70 in a stand of 1800 ish if if the rest of the stand don't want to sing they're not going to sing you can't do you ever think about maybe it. putting um, strategically people in little pockets we have stuff. thought about that yeah we have 
um, and, and decided not to do it for whatever mm. reason. It's difficult anyway because we we all literally have season tickets where we are, don't we? So, um, but I I do I. It's a difficult one because I think as many songs spread from the back of the stand mm. as they do from what we start at the front. Um, so the logical. Um, the logical fix to that would be to have someone in the middle who spreads our songs further back. Mm. But personally, I don't. We we can't start every song, so I think at the moment we don't actually have that bad a balance. Really. No, I think it's a good it's a good divide. There's a little group at back who tend to to sing, and we if we're having a, a lull, they may take over and, vi- and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, I think all we can do is 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 keep at it and and hope that everyone kind of joins in with us. I do genuinely think the mentality has started to change uh, over the last 18 to 24 months. I do think a lot of, certainly last season, uh, you know, if you spoke to a large majority of fans who go to games regular, if their team were bottom of the league, you know, you've you've talked about Newcastle, for example, uh, as being great fans. Newcastle. Yeah, exactly. I can guarantee if Newcastle were putting in the performances and as we were, they've all shredded their season cards after the Rafa news. Well, it could have been, it could have got really nasty at times. Mm. You know, we weren't performing, we were playing poor. Um, And trust me, in Europe, they'd have let the players know Yeah, we we actively as a whole fan base, maybe the Premier League novelty thing had a a bit to do with it, I don't know, but we stuck with that. We stuck with those players, and a lot of them didn't really deserve it. So, I'm, I'm, in terms of next season, whether that would happen again in the lower league, I don't know. Mm. I think we just have to wait and see. Well, we'll be top of league anyway. So does the shift in <laughs> expectation worry me? I'd, I'd be lying if I said no, um, because, like you said, it's not like we can go down, not win, a, not not score goals at home, and people be at least tolerant of mm. it. I mm. think I think people would either vote with their feet by not not showing up and then if crowds dwindle then the whole whatever feeling around the club starts to starts to turn a little bit sour but as as Paz said all we can do is just remain consistent with what we do and um, I'm I'm confident that we'll have a much better season than what we did last season so in theory that can only help fingers crossed so the last question or the last point I've got before moving on to our Twitter questions is in terms of the future do you see us because in Europe, because obviously you take a lot of influence from Europe as well. In Europe, the ultras are seen as, as as a kind of a political group as well. In in many ways, in that they influence the goings on inside the club. Do you see yourselves as a group similar to that, or do you kind of leave that sort of stuff to to Jim at HTSA? Or we could have a whole episode on that. We could, one. yeah. I think um, certainly. Or are you just the, the atmosphere HTSA drivers? Are the political arm of the CL fourteen. Yeah. I think, I think if, you, if you're talking political oh, yeah. as in parliamentary terms or you know left wing right wing well for part, example you know, all that yeah, sort of stuff we, we, no, no, no. Nothing, for example you know. the club badge has changed and you know the, I think I think as a fan group you you. so if for example we would support the HDSA's stance if we agreed with it yeah and if we didn't we would they're say the, they're the ones that um, saw it. they're the ones that you know rightly um, are meant to represent the best interests of Huddersfield Town fans as a whole mm-hmm. so they put out that statement which we fully supported as a group yeah. on the whole we supported it as well um, and I think yeah there is definitely a, a continental mentality that comes with that in that uh, particular teams from Germany for example they're meant to have a say in in key things that go on at the club one of those things is, is changing the club crest especially you know introducing a new logo for the second time in two years that's something that um, we we're not asking for a vote or anything on a panel, but it's not very difficult to canvass opinion. Uh, it, and I'm not saying that, you know, if they'd have canvassed opinion or whatever that they they'd have voted against changing it, for example, or said or, or advised against changing it. But I think that it's important that a, f- a football club is accountable um, to the right extent. You know, mm. like I say, we're not asking for votes or anything like that, but it is but something. Should, uh, yeah, the, we, so the question the, is, should that just be HTSA and you guys should just concentrate on the atmosphere, or or do you see yourselves as part of HTSA almost? We, we or as a separate. It's a totally, group? it's a totally separate entity. We have members of HTSA that sit with us, and members of HTSA who don't. Yeah. Um, we we get together as a group or chat, and we'll put out things that we feel we need to get involved in we've got involved in you know sort of things like stand up for town 
you know, we would fully back that movement, for example, yeah, stand, safe standing, standing within English football stadium, back that 100%. We have, we've got involved in, in, uh, when fans have been ejected, for example, mm-hmm. uh, and tried to help that, because again, we think that's part of our Again, remit, no, that's, for want of a better that's word. something where they, um, they, they have the know-how to, to do yeah. things um, the proper way. They know the people to, you know, it might have been a fan from our block or whatever, but they're, they're the ones who know but the proper still processes. work with HTS. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, in general, though, it's on a case-by-case basis. Definitely, There's yeah. things that the HTSA are involved in that um, is, is purely really their project, but we will help to promote, such as fans for food banks and stuff like that. And, I would um, hope everyone would, really. Of course, like yeah, that. that's it, but that's where we can use our, <laughs> I mean, without sounding vain or whatever we, we can use our influence and our reach to to get it to more people who otherwise might yeah. not have seen it um okay. and Good yeah in 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 terms of other stuff it's a case-by-case basis the badge thing was one of the things where we we um we saw the htsa stance and, and we agreed with it entirely uh okay so the badge was it came in from i think one of your mates danny at Danny HTFC. Oh, I think mates. he's one of your mates. Yeah, yeah go on, what's he saying? Um, he's a good he's Danny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I feel like this is a firecracker that he's thrown <laughs> in, and he just yeah. he's just said thoughts on the new badge. <laughs> so I just I just feel there is a bit of a uh, a firecracker, and and for someone who likes to uh, stir, I'm going to answer. Has he got out of that escape room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps tweeting about it. I think if it's the one I'm thinking of. So, what do you think of the new badge while we're talking about it? If we, do you want a personal opinion or a group opinion? Or? Personal, yeah, personal. Yeah, personal. Personally, uh, two statements. I don't like the badge, and I don't, I don't like the way they went about changing it. Um, that's long and short of it, really, from my own personal opinion. Uh, about yeah, it. the badge itself isn't. It's not particularly offensive, but I think it looks poorly designed. Um, there was a guy called Tom Bradshaw who he did a example, better one, didn't he? Fab well, he just changed the Fab shading, level. didn't he? I mean, the thing is, I am assuming the club hired a professional designer to do it. I think it would be fantastic media to do it. Oh, you, yeah. would, you would imagine. I don't know for sure, but I would think but as a club partner, they Tom would Tom is, is a professional designer and you know a fan of the club who would gladly sort of canvas opinion on what people thought about his designs. I'm not saying employ Tom it, to no, do it. No, I did it, on they, Twitter. He put one out, didn't he? And it was yeah. good. It was good. And the, and the response was generally good. And I'm not saying employ Tom to do the next, whatever, but that's that's kind of... There, there are a lot of there are, I put I put I pose this to Sean, you know, with regards to the kit, mm. you know, when we had Sean on the thing, and there are some really good designers. The Peter O'Toole, uh, we've yeah. seen, you know, in terms of the kit, Peter O'Toole, you got he's Tom, helped us as he's yeah, helped yeah, us Tom Brad, yeah. Bradshaw, Tom Bradshaw, it's a brilliant Twitter username. I love that, that guy. I do like that. He's yeah. always steaming it away. <laughs> the guy is, I the want to be. I, I love to meet him. He's he was the one as well who championed the late in May 2017 song. He just sung it repeatedly on the concourse, and next thing you know, you're singing it. singing it. Yeah, and and Johnny Hildred as well, who's done a lot of stuff for. I think he might have done some Cowshed Law stuff. So there, there are three basket. really good designers um, with Huddersfield Tech, Blue and White Blood, if you like, um, yeah, well, yeah. who who could do stuff, you know, such as create badges and what have you, and who who do it, maybe not necessarily for the love of the club, but they would do it at a good rate. And you know, I did did ask Sean, you know, with regards to kits, you know, would would you let someone design it? And I think that was a lot more difficult because of who we use and the templates we use. But I do for, seem for to a remember, badge, though. it would be interesting if you got mm. a number of different was... people. I, I seem to remember yeah. voting on a kit design at some point in my life. Yeah, that was the Millennium Again, maybe, one. Maybe, not Millennium, the Centenary Maybe a Centenary, stock yeah. set of templates, maybe. But uh, yeah, I think Ollie touched on it before. You know, I'm not asking to have a vote on who we sign as a right back or yeah, you yeah. know what washing powder we use to wash the kit. I, I, don't, I don't really care about it. things like that. <laughs> uh, but the badge represents, as a fan, I feel the badge represents the club, which represents me. Yeah. And yeah. You, you, how do you do it? Do you contact everybody? I mean, get a majority. I think the say, problem is if you get too honest, many. You know, too, I think what Sean said is if you get too much opinion, you get yeah. you get too many. So my, I too mean, many this opinions. This is perhaps so to speak, too. You know, and too many people think wanting different mm. things. This is perhaps too simplistic. We're supporters. We're fans, but we are also ultimately at the end of the day customers, and therefore I would like to say stakeholders. You know, they should care about our opinion because we're the ones who have to buy or, or choose not to buy the the stuff with the bad john you know what i mean that 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 should be no, something that they're interested 
in mm, making at least sure getting some feedback. Do you, so, think it, do you think it makes as much difference? Because obviously, if say, for example, they change the badge down the road and the guy there is not a fan of the club, mm. you know, and they ended up with a, a hilarious. Um, <laughs> at least it's not as bad as that. Let's be honest. It was a clip art thing, didn't they? But you know, do you think it makes a difference now? We've got Phil Hodgkinson, Dean Hoyle, people that fan Han Hoff, you know, fans on the board. Do you think it? it makes that as prevalent if you like if you've got fans making decisions at board level there or do you still think or have... do you still think that it could potentially be end of the day clubs yeah. got to make money so as much as they may want to do X Y may be better commercially for the club so it, I suppose it's a really fine balance in that for the board and we don't know what goes on in that boardroom and who says what and town fans costings and you know you've, you've got to you've got to give them Credit for what they've done over the last. You gotta give them some trust you know, as well. Of course you have. Well, yeah. yeah, like they, I said, I don't want to. They've earned that. You know, yeah. they've earned that. They've I, I just think with the badge run. itself, it's a big thing. I think for some people, some people don't even care. I think if it hasn't been, that's been for the second time in two years. So, for example, there was obviously absolutely no consultation about the the change of the badge on the kit, which was then used as sort of a I don't know what you want to call it, an emblem rather than a crest. Mm. You know, the, um, the the terrier with the ball on its own. Um, and then to change it again, you know, it's sort of like, how many times are you going to do this without? I think it was kind of a. But ironically, I think the the, the I think the one Chinese terrier is it's now being done because it's, 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 it's a Westie. Honestly, it's a Westie. It's not a Yorkshire terrier. It's a Westie. were a modernised <laughs> version of the red terrier like for one season. That's fine. I think yeah. people got on board with that. Might not liked it, but you know, at least it had a link to something. Whereas, yeah. Again, personal opinion to me, this just looks like they've had a list of things they want on a crest and they've got them all on. I think, I think it's too busy. Maybe, maybe try to please. Yeah, it just yeah. makes no sense. They maybe try to please too Old, many people. Old, new, oh, I want 1908 on, oh, I want it. Yeah. I want another rose on, I want stars. And The shield needs to change shit. Yeah. That, well, this, design is a big thing these days. And, yeah. you well, know, in, in my personal opinion, looks nice. I, I don't like the floral stuff. I, I don't mind the badge. You know, mm. I'm, I'm a little bit ambivalent. If someone throws it out, I'll be like, Ugh. but then I'll just deal with it. You know, just thinking, yeah. Yeah, okay. But... In terms of if, if someone asked me, would you, how would you, would you like this as your design? I'd be like, maybe drop the floral stuff. Yeah. Maybe drop the knight's helmet because it's half covered by the terrier anyway. And maybe just keep the badge and the shield. I don't like the shield. Mm-hmm. You know how the, you know, maybe the just keep that. coat of arms is, I think it should be a, a, with a slightly sheep. less busy version of that. Do you know the traditional one or the, the, the traditional coat? one that sort okay. of still dons the marking? It's got like the that, sheep, it's got sheep on it, has it? With, yeah, 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 that's right. I think. I can't get loads uh, of sticky like football slight, circles. A slightly it. less <laughs> busy version of that would be pretty good. I would, I would just chop everything from the outside and put the terrier on the blue and white stripes and just keep keep that yeah. personally but that's okay, it's all personal but then again I could, it? I could put that out and 100 people yeah. out of 100 could say no that's rubbish so well we've been discussing this for what two minutes and we've just said about 10 different yeah, things so it must have been an absolute so this, 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 this goes, goes to what well, this yeah, one goes to what Sean said if you ask too many people you get too many answers yeah. and nobody's happy you know at the yeah. end but so I just I just think uh, for something like that, and I read an article where Man City changed their badge. They had a, a six week consultation. That, ironically, that badge looks um, like our our old one under Ruby, yeah. Ruby, yeah. Um, and they went through a consultation, and I think they started off with twenty designs, and then they voted, whittled it down to to a three. And yeah, all right, you might not like the final one, well, but at least, least you've had, like like had a bit of a say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Man City multi million pound that, yeah, marketing think, campaign. We <clears> probably don't have that we, time yeah, and our resources. And I think they'd be scared of if they don't really have the means to have the have it on the website exactly. and then police if yeah. it gets hijacked by fans of yeah. whoever yeah you yeah. just all oh, i mean all it takes is a we've seen leeds's attempt at um pleasing the fans with a new badge you know they claim to have consulted a lot of people mm-hmm. on that and i don't know who they consulted they certainly weren't leeds ms fans. word clipper <laughs> i think they consulted on that one but we'll move on from that yeah. mm-hmm. um so the twitter questions that we've had come in uh, the first one that we've got through is from dan peckett dan's <laughs> Uh, really great at getting involved with the show get a lot of interaction for Dan uh, good name as well peck it it's not far off you though is it <laughs> no it's not no, actually Porrit a couple peck of bowls yeah. there could be, it could be a, a branch of lawyers there Porrit 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 peck it peck it so uh, Dan um, Dan's tweet says what's everybody's favourite memory of Scoffer so obviously it was Scoffer's funeral last Saturday uh, this might not go out immediately but you know we're filming uh, not filming that we, you, everyone would hate it if we filmed this honestly it was, it was on it but we, we, we're recording this so Ollie's looking offended now, <laughs> Ollie's still young <laughs> but we, we, we've done this on the 27th of June so Scoffer's funeral uh, was on Saturday um, Scoffer's somebody I've 
I wouldn't ever class him as a close friend because I didn't know him that well. Mm -hmm. uh, Cosy, you know, I wish Cosy was here because Cosy was a really close friend of Scoffers and he'd be able to say something fantastic. Some of the stuff he's put on Facebook and Twitter is really, really moving what mm. he's been able to do and some of the pictures. Um, so Dan's said, what's everybody's favorite memory? I went on the Millbridge buses with uh, Scoffer. And like I said earlier, when, when you went on the Millbridge bus, it was always a better place when he was there because mm. there was always fun. There was always a laugh. And I think the best thing about him when you know you first go on a bus and it's full of rowdy people you know 40 odd rowdy people with fruit shoots you know and what's in that fruit yeah, shoot, you know? yeah, yeah. It's not but fruit you go it? on and he would always make everybody welcome and i think that was a, a real skill that he had was mm. that he would come over and he would he would say hello and he would without really having to do much and babysit you if you like he would make you feel welcome immediately like you belonged with everybody and i think that's a, a skill that not a lot of people have you mm. know and, and only really you know people like him tend to possess you know in that you can go somewhere you don't really know this guy but within two minutes you feel like you've known him for years and you feel really welcome in his company and i think that's a, a, a huge skill and going on those buses the, there are some memories i don't know if they're fit for uh, <laughs> but you know we know walsh or gav walsh don't we yeah. moved over to yeah. america and his dad used to go on the the buses uh, as well and i think tony got so Tony's ex army, so he, he likes to, you know, an ex boxer, so he likes to tell everybody he's, he's rock solid and hard. He probably would lamp me, to be fair. <laughs> but, oh, I definitely would. Yeah, but, definitely would. Yeah, but he, uh, he, he remember going away to Bournemouth for the playoffs, and he was like, "Oh, I'm going to do an all nighter and drink all day. I'm, you know, I can handle it. You know, I'm late forties, early fifty, I can handle this." And like, I'm, I'm going to bed, Tony. You do what you want. And, and he, uh, I remember him turning up, and he was saying, "Yeah, oh, I was drinking last night, and I'm drinking this morning." And um, it's we went down on the Millbridge bus, and he did quite well. To be honest, remember uh, Paul Aspinall, who's just yeah. had a uh, come off his bike, and, we, and uh, Paul's not going to listen to this because I don't think he's that bothered about it. <laughs> but if anyone who knows him does, we wish Paul all the best with his recovery from falling off of his bike as well. He's a he's a really top man. Yeah, went in, in yeah, his company as well. Paul, he was yeah. on the Millbridge bus. Yeah, done well. a few away days with. And Paul, he yeah. never made it into the ground. He fell asleep underneath the bus, uh, <laughs> moving in because Sky been Sky moved didn't have I think the other one was Swindon versus Peter, uh, Swindon versus no that can't Charlton. am I getting Swindon versus Charlton yeah Danny Ward was mint for Swindon yeah and they yeah. moved our game to it was like that because it was played Peterborough in the final so Peterborough MK Dons wasn't it uh, so yeah. Swindon Barmer Charlton was the year before 12.30 wasn't well, it yeah so the Sky moved it to 12.30 and then had a more local game at 5.30 mm. thanks thanks Sky so we got there for about half 11 on the bus and Tony's still going at this point and Scoff's keeping an eye on him as, as usual and we got up into the stand and Tony sat behind us because we all had tickets together and Kevin Kilban scored you know with a header we're all jumping up around we turn around and Tony's collapsed it <laughs> 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 crashed it absolutely gone and he missed 80 minutes of the game because he'd he not just slept the night before wow. <laughs> he'd had a few drinks on the way down he was blathered and I just remember Scoff looking after him and then when he turned his back for two minutes, Wayne Diggers was had Jane's lipstick and drawing stuff all over his head. And it, it was a good trip, and he was fuming when he woke up. But, I can but imagine. We we stopped a few times, and I remember Scoff, you know, doing you know helping with collections at Littleworth and stuff, you know, for to look after the bar and yeah. you know organising different things. And it was a lot of fun. And there's a there's a story which down in Southampton, which I didn't go to on one of the trips with Harris Langfield. Oh, um, yeah. Harris is. On one of the trips, Harris, I remember pulling Scoffer through two seats, through two seats on a bus, and I've never been as terrified of anybody's strength <laughs> in my life. I spent the next three years calling him the cracker because <laughs> you know, he, he ripped him through these seats. You know, he was like, Scoff, I want you. And he reached over and ripped him through, not over, through. And Scoff's six foot three and 15 yeah, stone. And he's ripped him through. I, honestly, I've never been as scared as anybody's strength in my life as what, what Harris's was. But I remember he, he told a story on Facebook whereby they were down in Southampton having some drinks and the next minute they're like where's Scoff where's Scoff and they turned around and he's throwing his hat on the ground because he's wearing his Lionel Richie stuff he's throwing a hat on the ground and he's singing Lionel Richie outside this bar and German <laughs> tourists are throwing <laughs> into a hat for him. and I thought it that was just amazing his, uh, yeah I just thought that were absolutely amazing and just sort of his, the level of where you know the fun that he brought you know and, and never anything ha always harmless always fun mm. um, and my favourite memories are just in how he made everybody how we made away days more fun, you know, and, and 
we went to Charlton and you know I, I remember taking a picture with Scoff and Benicophobia at Brighton away and stuff and you know we're always a lot more fun when he was around mm. and I think there's a lot of people I'll genuinely miss him but yeah. Um, so yeah so obviously all the best to Scoff and his or Scoff's family yeah there. I mean I went just to, just to sort of follow on from that I actually went down to his funeral on um, on Saturday and it was just a, it was it was nice to see so many so many people there uh, I think he was one of those blokes that you knew him if you didn't know him kind of thing you see him yeah, yeah. You, you, knew, you, knew, you knew of him but you kind of felt like you knew him just because you did like so many stories Mark Ainley you know those sort of characters yeah, they're Russ Fotherby Mark Ainley they're just people who you know yeah. familiar face without knowing you know, regrettably um, for me I only really spoke to him on a handful of occasions but he was always a familiar face one of those people where you felt like you could go and talk mm. to him you know because you spot each other at away games and stuff yeah, like that yeah we always had to say how do to one and stuff yeah, and just, yeah. Sad. Very, sad, very sad. Uh, yeah, so we'll move on from from Scoff and obviously all the best to um, to Scoff's family and uh, and friends. You know, it's a, a tough time. So uh, there's, I think there's going to be uh, there's there's talk of a uh, a get together. I think uh, next season as well for one of the games. So hopefully we'll, you know, we'll if if it's yeah. if it's share, yeah. shareable, we'll we'll share it. You know, um, yeah. Towards then, I think it's after Christmas. I think sometime they're looking to do and and hopefully we'll be able to get down and. And send some pictures back from as well. So that'll be that'll be hopefully a lot of fun in his memory. So so we'll move on to Claire Hill. Claire's another contributor that um, contributes quite often. Um, so thanks Claire again for sending us a tweet. Uh, and and she said, "What's your, I've stolen hers." And she said, "What's your favourite display that you've created so far?" Which we've kind of covered, but. Um, Ollie's favourite one. Ollie, I was going to ask you the one where they're all linked together. Is that with a painting on sale in the club shop as well? There's a almost like an oil painting where yeah, they're all linked right, together yeah, isn't yeah, it yeah, so that's the yeah. same one so you, the one that yeah it was the one that it was poignant because the banner at the front said unity and that was just such a fitting word for that season and and I, f- I feel like the display did I'm going to have to great. side with Ollie on that one I did like I did like that one quite a lot I thought yeah Sheffield Wednesday playoff game was that yeah yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a great one yeah because so. I left the I took the yeah. unity banner to Chef Wednesday away, yeah. hung it up, and I was supposed to bring it home, but because obviously what happened, it's an omen, uh, it's still, it might still it's be there. Com- I don't know. It's com- <laughs> yeah. Someone will shine. It's blue and white. They might mix it. it. I don't know. But yeah, I got a bit of grief for that. So. There'll be a mobile phone light on it somewhere. <laughs> it? So. Uh, Molly Firth has, has said, "Watch, we've done this. I've stolen this one as well." And she said, the "Favorite chant from players from from the current squad." Um, so current squad, <laughs> you've yeah. said. Some Aaron Moy is still is still with us. Aaron uh, Moy, Congolo, I like the Congolo song. That's, uh, that's, a, yeah. that's a decent one. Do you, what about Isaac and Benza for the uh, Scott Malone song, Ollie? I don't quite fit. We do, we do, we do. <laughs> we try, do, do it's we, one of those that I kind of wince when it gets started. Um, yeah, I think Cosie would throw in uh, the Dear Carby Salt and Pepper one as well. See that was really disappointing because I you you made that up. I think you had about fifteen pints or something when you started singing that. Grand that fifteen that, pints before yeah. this as well. <laughs> that, that was one of those that starts almost as a joke, and I heard you singing it, and it's I was like, I quite like that. It's a catchy and the really disappointing well. thing was that Dear Carby ended up being just not so good. That's yeah, <laughs> and never played anyway. But you know, if he's back next season and he's, he's doing all right, I'm sure that it'll, was one I'm that sure it'll take off. At because and away, it's, and I remember it's good. It, I remember it because of the acoustics in that away end, well, right, away yeah. side at the Everton. We, it was just me and Ash Hep started it out of nowhere, and then it really, really caught on. So we stuck with that. Yeah. I quite like the Philip Billing one. Yeah, uh, but I don't like Phil Billing. Anymore. The love of my life, that one. Yeah, yeah. Who, who do we say? Neil Trotman got that first. Yeah. Trotman, that was a little good old bit. Trotman. Yeah, the end. That's going that's back a, a few years, that isn't it? Yeah, the, the ending to that's a little bit risque. Yeah, I don't think you could so, probably yeah. get away with that. I wish now. I was like you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll move on from that one. So if uh, Dia, just on that, if Dia Carby is listening, get your act together, mate, because you've got a good song and we want to sing it. So you know, come on. She uh, she mentions that obviously we've signed Josh Caroma. Is there any chance that we're going to uh, do my Sharona to Josh Caroma because Leighton Orient sadly never got that going. They ended up doing a Macarena, which a couple of their fans weren't over the No, I'm not, I'm not a fan so of that do, one. That's... Do you not fancy a... What, the Macarena? No, the, the uh, Macarena. 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 Ma- ma- you, you probably don't even know that. Macarena. No, no, it's my Sharona, isn't it? Macarena. No, I know the my Sharona one. Yeah, um, they're doing a Macarena at the I'm just confused Corona. about this Macarena. I think you were probably hey, too young, mate. For, so. Macarena. for Macarena? I think it was Hey Josh. School discos, mate. Yeah, that hey was Josh. Not like jam popping School discos. Um, 
We'll see what we can no, do. No, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna rule it out, but I don't think so. It doesn't really lend itself to a chant per se, and you can't imagine loads of lads in it's the South Sudan. Mama my Corona, bit of Josh Corona, I know. I think it's one of them. Sometimes a song works like that, but you've also got to then think it's got a role. So if it doesn't have a natural role, it's the lead up to that. Yeah, the bit would fit. Yeah, it's quite difficult. And if we can maybe get something to, it's the loop in a song sometimes. You've got to, you've got to, I think that's a watch this space. Right, nice. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, right, so Robert at Robo ABAWZ. Um, I'm not sure where that is, but he, he, he deserves a reprimand as well because he's, he's talking in Geordie as well. So he's put, What would you say has been your best memory in relation to the Cowshed Loyal, whether that oh. would display after hours of hard work being well received by the fans, time spent with other members, or just general football memory? So away from displays and singing, you know, you could... I, you know, so it's a good question, is that? Sound, Even though it's put use in it. So it sounds a little bit um, a little bit soft, but like sort of the, the mates that I've made through the group, you know. Um, just... Poz is nodding, but I don't think he wants to acknowledge because yeah. it's a bit soft. Well, I didn't include Poz in that. He's not. <laughs> I don't like any group, group, if I'm honest with you. No, but it, it, it's funny how you sort of move from, um, like I say, sitting um, sitting at games with, with my grandma and all of a sudden you, you go in with a group of lads who are sort of your age, who, who, who are very similar to you, and, and yeah, it's just, it just completely transforms how you spend your weekend, I guess, doesn't it? I think personally with regards to... Um, the, the sort of displays the, the Yorkshire Rose one took a lot of work to prep and I think it's probably one of the well it's my favourite one most effective um, I, I just think I think Ollie touched on it earlier the the whole unity of the stadium when everyone decides to, to join in the stand up for town there's been some fantastic renditions of Smile a while which is something we've tried to push at kick off and that mm. seems to be almost ingrained now um, sometimes a little bit too quick to start it maybe um, but yeah that's kind of ingrained that's growing all the time I, I just think it's just the last two seasons of just from start to finish like a proud founding off the father start. well yeah like a proud founding father yeah yeah. Um, yeah I think Spurs at home when we the first season that was good was even though it was 4-0 like yeah. no one seemed to care hmm. and it, I think sometimes when you've got that attitude it's stifles the away fans as well because historically again, like, oh we're winning 4-0 yeah. we should be out singing them yet we're out singing them and it, it tends to dampen their spirits so you get an actual you get a better atmosphere and anyway. Spurs fans end up clapping across don't they yeah, yeah which is a, a bit of a strange thing yeah. to, to happen it's a bit that, unusual but, don't like no. <laughs> I'd rather they be users <laughs> oh dear. Uh, right so um our friend, our mutual friend, Dale the Misery Marsden. Yeah, oh, negative. Uh, <coughs> yeah, we love giving Dale some stick. But he's a good really lad. Like he's a good lad, really. He's a good lad. Um, says, can we please slow... See, he's mourning. Again, but he's saying, can we please slow some songs down? I agree with him on that. Yeah. Just in football in general, it's not just town. It's, remember when England fans sang, sing the national anthem, you know, the they pretty much finished it before you're halfway through the first verse, you know. And yeah. It's a football fan thing. And it's because it's tribal and you're trying to shout and chant and... And get things going. It's um, I think sometimes a lot of people have a habit of doing it too quickly. But do you think there's any chance of slowing things down a little bit? Maybe. I mean, I, slow ideally, dancing? yeah. Some of the songs should be should be slower, and I think that's where the drum comes into it. You know, we we have you've mentioned we have a drummer. Um, we try work. He's only a young lad, so we do try work with him to sort of the drum, as in any sort of band. Uh, keeps the beat, keeps the pace, and uh, pace, uh, yeah, sometimes yeah. it can get a bit excited and it goes a bit too quick. Um, yeah, it's one of them. Yeah. It's, it's an historical problem that's not just going to change because we put a few tweets out about it. It's changing. Yeah. Dale does say the atmosphere versus Man United was great, and he says everyone enjoyed that. Oh, so. geez, yeah. Dale. That can't have been him putting that. He's had something <laughs> nice, is it? <laughs> nah, um, I, there's certain songs that definitely lend themselves to it. I, for me, we always sing, Oh, when the town go marching in far too quickly. You know, if we did that the really Spurs slow version slows, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, And also, I would really like us to do, I think I've said this before. Um, the first bit of um, those were the days quite slow would be quite good you know yeah, yeah. you know what I mean like yeah. the original song kind Carry of on. On. no I'm not gonna, no I don't think uh, I don't think stepping even on, you can put an effect on that stepping on uh, Cosy's toes a little bit there but it's not <laughs> really so. 
Yeah, um, I, think, I think, like you say, it's an English thing to, to get through stuff as quick as you can. And it's almost like you're trying to get tribal. It's, it's like beating before. your chest, isn't it? It's yeah. like going into war almost like. Um, you're almost trying to get onto the next song sometimes before you've even finished last Anglo Saxons uh, beat. I think that's the, the length of the songs as well. <laughs> Keep the same song going for a longer period of time because sometimes we feel that we've rushed through pretty much this whole repertoire by 25, 30 minutes and then you just repeating so I think the Lou and Town Away were a good example of that when yeah, yeah. it were a new song that started to gradually build and it kind of proved to us that if you want to introduce a new song you've got to give it 10-15 minutes it might might pick up it might drop off but when it does drop off as a groove we've got to keep it going to spread it again um, so yeah mm-hmm. we'll, we'll try as best to, to yeah I think to it's, it I think down it's fair again. to bear in mind not everybody's as keen on social media looking for stuff like this as you so yeah. they just hear things on a Saturday so it's a snowball effect. It's a difficult it? one. It's a, like I said. The last uh, question that's come through is from Dylan Barlow, uh, and he's mentioned what's happening with the safe standing situation. I think Dean Hoyle covered this a bit in a Q&A mm. a bit since, didn't he? But if you guys... It seems, it seems all quiet on that front. I think HGSA are probably more informed on that matter than um, that. But. Yeah, without wanting to go too far into it, um, as far as we know, as has been tweeted, the club have surveyed um, the opinion of town fans on safe standing and they've not yet released those results so we've been through the stand up for town campaign been putting sort of public pressure on them to release those results because we believe based on our own surveys that we've done um, both through HGSA and Cowshed Loyal that the vast majority of our fans will be in favour of safe standing in the right areas so uh, does, I it, think does it matter because you guys get to stand anyway don't you I don't so, think it matters as much as what it once did um, in regards to when we had overzella stewarding, you couldn't stand up. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. like, oh, we need safe standing. Not only, yeah, right, we are allowed to stand, but how many, I know I've certainly come away from games with bruised shins, cuts from falling over chairs in front of you. Sometimes so it's not pushing you over. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just always about being able to stand yeah. up, it's, it's about being able to stand up safely. Yeah. It, 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 you know. There's so many... Um, so many cases for it as well from a business point of view like you can get you know for one row of seats you can sort of get one and a half rows of safe standing so like two for three that kind of thing um and yeah it's about safety it's it's proven to be far more safe people do fall over seats and stuff it happens um and the idea is to be flipped down seats but they'd lock in place so mm. it would fix the problem of people like standing spurs, on seats yeah. it, spurs was it makes sense build, for the build, build, build. and it makes sense for for us, I think we would prefer it as well because it's rail seating, um, and it's, it's you know it's a better experience. But Dean Hoyle made a um, a point on this, and he said safe standing is usually a specific area, mm. you know where they would do it. So his his point, I, I might paraphrase this because I can't hundred percent remember, but he said in terms of safe standing, it would probably be one area which would probably be the the south stand, and he said the problem with that is the way we've got it at the minute is mm. pretty good because. You guys stand, you know, the ones in the Kilner Banks, the stand, you know, Lawrence Batley Lower stand. But if they brought safe standing in, it would have to be one specific area, which would then mean that the club would have to enforce seating in the other areas, which yeah. would then stifle other areas. So he's kind of sort of. I think they've had that problem it. at Tottenham, haven't they? They put this, yeah. the, the bar, I know it's not official safe standing, but it basically is. And they've put it in the, the big stand behind the goal, and they've been really on top of people standing in the other areas, yeah. which. And apparently that's the rules with safe standing mm. in that it has to be in a specific area. So not a case of be careful. Well, I think what Dean Hoyle said is be, be careful, careful what you wish for. for. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm sure he'll have looked into it because I think it's something that at that time when, when the movement was gaining a lot of momentum, um, everybody or all the influential figures at the club would have been in favour of it um, because we were taking such a, a European, like continental approach to it. Um, and, you know, you've got to trust that Dean knew exactly what he was talking yeah. about I think the that, other side to it as well is that as it stands the stadium is 40% is, is That's run it, by yeah. a Kirkley, you know, KSDL or KDSL as we used to call it when Ken Davey used to own the majority <laughs> of it so the majority I is genuinely owned, thought it was called <laughs> Ken Davey Stadium <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, might as well have been on it yeah that's what we used to call it but yeah so KSDL would be the ones who should front the bill for it because mm. Huddersfield are no longer in the Premier League so money's not as you know unless Phil yeah. Hodgkinson's feeling particularly flush but people I think would prefer him to focus on the team I would yeah, imagine yeah. Um, so unless KSDL front that then again you've got another issue maybe there with, it's nice uh, to see other clubs though we're installing it it is gathering momentum and it the is Celtic, Celtic have done uh, Celtic it, as well, have it. Yeah. like I say Tottenham is 
pretty much. I don't know if it's officially stay standing, but it is. They are uh, there, aren't they? Yeah, they have it at Shrewsbury, I think. Shrewsbury do. Uh, Wolves are going to Wolves are putting it in. a bit, and it, it's all helping. Um, yeah, it's all it's all helping push it in the right direction. Yeah. I think I understand what what I was saying about that, but I do firmly believe there is a solution out there that that would. So you yeah. think the area could cover more than just the south stand? Maybe you could have yeah. the south end at Kilner as yeah, well. I, yeah, you're probably um, going to get a bit of a cross reference there with or a mix with mm. people wanting to and not wanting to stand in areas, and you might have different battles. So there's probably well, the different idea things. Is it's isn't choice. It? It's all pro yeah. choice, isn't it? You know, if, if if people want to move there, then they can move. But people there. are already there. I think that's the. Point. I, I think it's one of those. It's you know, club can't sort of have it both ways because I know people who suddenly got turfed out of a season ticket seat that they'd been sat in for X amount of years when we got to the Premier League because they needed to put a television gantry there. Mm. So they can't use the line of, you know, Fred Bloggs has sat in that seat, I'm not changing it because he won't come when they actively removed people. And gave them priority. Well, and, well yeah, they got rewarded for it. Yeah, as, so. as you'd expect. Um, but yeah, it must, it's an hard thing and we don't own stadium and yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, it it's is a long road. It's, it's not going to be a, qu- a quick journey, but um, it's something we'll definitely keep pushing because we still. It's something that we would like to be introduced. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so that's it for Twitter questions and questions that I would have. Is there anything you guys want to bring to the table that we've not already covered? No, no. I think we've covered pretty much everything. I think the main thing for us for next season is you know stick with us. Um, yeah. If it don't go well on the pitch, you know, let's not lose the. Sort of the the really good work that we've built up over the last sort of certainly the last twenty four months, two seasons. Um, you know we're in it for the long haul. We don't want to be one of these groups that sets up and within five well, we've done five years now. It will be next season. But you find a lot of groups have a shelf life. Mm. People move on. We want to make sure that, that it's more of a legacy that that comes, and we want people to come through and get involved. So I think Ollie's mentioned it two or three times. But if you are interested. You know, we are in Gas Club pretty much every home game. You know, it's obvious where we sit. Come down, have a chat. You know, yeah, we can see so we can get people in at front if that's where you yeah. want to be. If people aren't confident um, enough to approach the yeah. at Ginger Ogre, if yeah. you like, and uh, <laughs> and a six foot plus Ollie. Is there a way that can send you an email? <laughs> yeah, we as DMs are open on Twitter. Send us a DM. So there's an at Cowshed um, Loyal, is it? At, at Cowshed Loyal. Ginger Ogre for you, Dan. Yeah. At Ollie Fisher. Ollie Fisher. Uh, Facebook, we don't really have much of a presence on Facebook. I think we, generally yeah, we, it's sort of sliding, but we are on Facebook. Yeah, uh, we do. I mean, our, our, you know, people do send us Facebook messages. Um, so yeah, if you've got a suggestion early on Facebook, send us a Facebook message. We will read it and we will reply. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just in in terms of other stuff, just basically keep an eye out on social media for stuff that we push. Like I say, there'll be new merchandise coming soon. Um, and we've tried to pick designs that we think will sell among the general fan base and designs that are perhaps a bit more specific to the to the south stand and the stuff in there that's a nod to the past as well so we've got a nice range of that stuff coming not up a, not a red terrier no no we've already done that that might come back at some point yeah um, maybe a re issue well, do like that, do those, like who, those who like the cow shed might be pleased with the, with the design yeah we've got a definite up. nod to the um, cow shed coming so, up so yeah we're excited about that and then obviously um Keep an eye out for, for stuff that we post about potential meetups. Um, we're thinking about doing something. It's only in the planning phase at this point for that Montpellier home pre-season game because it's a Saturday. Um, so there might be a little something on for that. And yeah, then um, away days maybe. Yeah, couple, maybe a couple of away buses as well. But these are all stuff that we, you know, as soon as the fixtures came out, we've been talking about. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we can only do what we can do with the support of everybody else. You know, that's a key message for all fans and we do fully appreciate people helping us out with the merch with the donations mm-hmm. um, you know it's not for everyone we're fully aware of that you know any feedback we get we we usually discuss it constructive criticism is, is welcome do you have like a committee or anything it's not well we have a whatsapp, a we have a WhatsApp group <laughs> Committee is a strong a word too, a it's not formal. as official as that but we, we are in constant contact you almost yeah. You know, we Saturdays when season starts up, we see each other. We we down at, at Gas Club making displays, and I think sometimes the the, the little the little things uh, when we go down to do stuff like that, we tend to be more proactive in in getting stuff sorted. So yeah, if anyone has any suggestions, you know, let us know. We mm-hmm. we we do try to. Obviously, we've got our own ethos and our own views on how we want the group to be. But you know, if people can get involved, then. Come down, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in. Yeah, thank thanks you for, for having the, thank you. the two hours and the very best of luck for next season.
unless one of you wants to sing us out in Cosy's absence. <laughs> 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 Give us a minute. <laughs> Is this the moment for Lee Fowler? It is. Take your place in Division 2, Huddersfield Town. He's missed. Steve Simonson clears the flame of the goal and collapses in a heap of tears. Pate's got a chance. Pate scores. Jack Pate scores. Heffel is in there. Smith scores for Huddersfield Town! 3-2 Town! For a Sherry, Danny Ward saves! Danny Ward saves! The quatch was in, round the hair! 2-0 Huddersfield Town! Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance!